Hello. There we go. Right. Keep on talking over this uh, mic frame USB port. <laughs> I need to make sure it's uh, the right one before I start. I think this is all correct. Let me just listen in briefly. Uh, just to confirm that the microphone is picking me up. Yep, cool. Right. So, plan today is um, to continue with some Blender stuff. Um, what I want to do is I want to start modelling some of the other items that are in the game. So, along the lines of the coins that you can collect, the um, cake and the alcohol, and then maybe start looking at some of the obstacles, but uh, that might be a little bit later. Um, I found this uh, YouTube channel, which is called uh, Infancia. Infancia. Sorry if I got that wrong. Um, but the uh, guy does lots of quick loady, uh, low poly models in Blender. He's got a series of doing like um, most things in like 10 minutes with a countdown timer. Um, but he's done a tutorial here which is about low poly modeling. So hopefully this will cover most of the basics. Um, he did say it would basically cover things from almost scratch so should fit quite well with where we are. Uh, I'm just going to drop the volume of Spotify a little bit so I can hear what's going on. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to try following along with this tutorial today. But um, obviously taking it in different directions and making our own things rather than just following along step by step. This kind of speed. The graphic and perspective mode using five on the keypad. Basically, that removes the perspective. And that's ah, cool. that's quite cool. Up here, you've got something called the outliner, and this will show you which object you've got in your scene. And down here is a properties area, and we'll only be using this spanner looking thing here, which is a modifier properties. The rest we can ignore for now. I also like to use the N key to bring this numbers panel up in where we can type in detail sometimes. In Blender, we use a left click to select nowadays. So it used to be right click, but nowadays it's left clicking. Thank God for that. If you use the right mouse button, you get a context menu up. I don't really use that one so much. Maybe you'll find use of it, but there well, are let's, let's turn the this on as well. Delete key. And we can get rid of this light here, for example, and this camera. We don't need those when we do modeling. If you accidentally delete something, then you can press Control Z like in most programs and bring it back. One of the most common questions that I get asked is how I colorize my low poly objects. Colorizing your objects is essential to get those low poly objects to look just right. I go to the shading tab and if you go to the description you can download this file as well. I've created a palette for you and you can just drag this PNG file right into this section of your shading view material editor window here. You can also download the palettes from lowspec.com for example. They've got loads of palettes so you can create your own ones in uh, any drawing program like Photoshop I use for example. You can use free ones as well. And be aware that my textures, I do them in extremely low resolution. This one is only 8 by 8 pixels because it saves a lot of texture space when you do an import into a game engine. But we need to collect this color node here to the base color and you can see that it's really blurry. Okay, let's uh, get that. I think we've got something similar, but... Uh, palettes. Hopefully the script box is still live. What's the difference? D plus six gradient and a palette. Let's just download these. So really, we don't need this side window at all, I don't think. Very close windows. Join areas. That way. There we go. I don't think we need that either. Doesn't look like it. Uh, wait, what did he say? Oh, he has got those right on, here, but... And it's because it's so low resolution. But we're just gonna drop this one in. Nope. Unknown location. Oh, 
Right. Let's uh, jump in here. No, I just make that in. Ah, do I have to have this selected first? Yes, there we go. Or is it this one? This is the 8x8 eight eight one. It's even better. Let's fit that off. Put that on there. And then... Uh, let's just put these two in a file that's useful. Hey Runa, how's it going? Actually, let's go to Blender and we'll drop it in here. I'm good, thanks, yeah? Trying some um, Blender tutorials today. What I want to do is I want to remodel all of the like default objects that I've made in Unity. Just so they look a bit nicer than circles and squares. You're losing in a card game. You haven't won for like five hours. Wow, what are you playing? <laughs> is it like Hearthstone or is it like a poker game? Or somewhere, somewhere in between that. <laughs> Resident Evil 7 DLC. They've got a card game in that. Are you playing against the Baker family? <laughs> that was seven, wasn't it? The uh, 21. <laughs> there are, uh, there are guides for 21. Oh, is it not? I, th I thought it was the same thing. Have they got different rules in the, in the game then? has trump cards. Mm. What's, the, what's the purpose of it though? Is it just like, just its own standalone? Let's it go and play some cards. Or you, uh, to get more story out of it or something like that. Just, I'm just imagining you sat at the table with all the Baker family playing blackjack. <laughs> it's the DLC. So we also need to change from linear here to closest, and that'll be make it crisp and nice. I actually use the UV editing tab to do most of my modeling because if I zoom in here with the mouse wheel on the left, you can see I've got quick access now to these colors that are in that texture. If I resize this as well. Now the cube here, as you can see, is unfolded onto this texture, and it's basically representing the 3D cube in 2D texture space. If I use this little drop down here, we can switch to texture, and that shows you exactly how these uh, UVs are laid out. So this front side, for example, is uh, represented right here. We've got quick access now to colorize this object. If I you get a little bit of backstory. If I use this little drop down here, we can switch to texture, and that shows you exactly how these uh, UVs are. Right. Is the drop, right? onto this texture, and it's basically representing the 3D cube in 2D texture space. If I use this little drop down here, we can switch to texture, and that shows you exactly how these uh, UVs are laid out. So this front side, for example, is uh, represented right here. We've got quick access now to colorize this object. If I select all of these faces with A key, and then on the left side here now, I'll press A, and then I scale it down to zero. And then I can press G on the left side here to move it. G is for grab or to move. <laughs> G as a move. And if I place it over green here now, cube becomes Ooh. green. And if I wanted to change this face color here, I select the face, and then I press G on the left side. Right, a bit too quick. Right, so... Scale, wait, this side, old, scale, zero. Why has it not got my um, screen cast?
this window. That doesn't seem to be working either. Does it only work in the layout window? No, it's not working here either. Do I have to unselect it and reselect it? Yeah, okay. But we're also losing most of it. Oh, because of the offset. How did you find the game in general? Did you, you... You were doing like a run through of the full Resi 7, weren't you? How did that go? Had you played it before, or was it all brand new? Move that to like 70, 40, that's fine. Okay, so you're doing like a speedrun version. <laughs> okay, yeah, it shows on both screens there then. Right, so A. Here we can go G and move it around. Let's say we wanted a green color. And we had a green, okay. Have you played a uh, village? That one looks quite fun. I think when it first came out, I probably watched about six different playthroughs, playthroughs of it. <laughs> and isn't there, there was a, a two remake, wasn't there, that was quite good. And actually, was there a three? Resi 3 remake as well. I think they did. I, I used to have uh, Resi 4 on the GameCube when it came out the first time. And uh, <laughs> I think in the first village, you come up to a guy with a chainsaw. And I was like, that, that kind of terrified me when I was younger. <laughs> and I probably... I think I got past that village and I got to the lake and that was about it. I think once I got to the lake, I was just like, no, nah, maybe this isn't my kind of game. <laughs> I should go back to those actually. You broke Cuphead. How did you break it? I did see you were doing some um, expert runs. But you're on... Are you on... <laughs> he killed the devil before he got to the second phase. Wow. <laughs> are you using the... The first version? So you can do the, like, the fast switching and all that kind of... Yeah, nice. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to that. <laughs> Yeah, you, you were like decimating all of the, um, uh, what was it? It was King Dice's uh, mini bosses. Oh, I saw. <laughs> and this is a really fast way to colorize your low poly objects and make them look really crisp and clean. Don't worry, I'll cover the hotkeys as well about moving and scaling and things like that in detail. This was just to demonstrate the coloring. There are a few things that you need to be aware of when you do this. When I scale down this UV here down to basically zero, as you can see, it's just a little dot. When you import these objects into a game engine, like Unity or Unreal, they might require a UV layout to render, for example, shadows correctly. In Unity, you can enable Unity to generate a second set of UVs, or you can create a second set of UVs in Blender here. We don't need to do that at this point, because I'm just going to show you the coloring process for, for shadows correctly. In Unity, you can enable... Oh, in Unity, okay. Generate a 
the second set of UVs, or you can create the second set of UVs in Blender here. We don't need to do that at this point because I'm just going to show you the coloring process, but be aware that there might be some tweaks that you need to do when you're going to start using these assets in Blender. The second most common question I get in all my comments is uh, I changed my viewport settings a little bit and people are asking how I get about to do that. So if you use this drop down here, I often model with shadows enabled and especially with this cavity feature here. And if I change... Right, so shadows... Cavity... And where is shadows? Shadows. Just type here to both... It's pretty quick. I'm just going to go at normal speed. World and screen. Or for world and screen. Oh, I select both here. And I ramp these up. Then you get glowing edges onto your objects. And when you make a little art, for example, like a car screen, or for world and screen, oh, I select both oh, here. Both. And I ramp these up. Then you get glowing edges onto your objects. And when you make low poly art for world and screen, or for world and screen, oh, I select both here. And I ramp these up then you get glowing edges onto your objects. And when you make low poly art, for example, like a car or a tree or something, whatever, a character even, then having this cavity enabled can make the low poly objects really stand out nicely. So I usually do this when I model. You can also use the workbench render to render objects using the cavity settings if you want. There's one final setting that I like to recommend. And if you use this drop down again, you should enable this back face culling feature. And that will tell you if you have faces that are facing the wrong direction. Sometimes you can have a face that's facing inwards like this one, for example. If I go into the cube now, you can see that this face here is facing inwards. And most game engines don't render the backside of a face. You can enable that, but most of the time they don't render. And in Blender, if you don't have back face culling, then you won't really be aware that you have some holes like this in your mesh. So I recommend ah, okay. that you enable back face culling. That way you can see when something's broken and you can fix it. There's something called, for example, if you press F3 and type in flip normals, then you can flip that back. But there are other ways as well. I'll tell you about that. There's something called object mode in edit mode in Blender. And by default, when you come in, it's in object mode. And basically you can click, click on an object and it'll select it here in the outliner. But to edit an object, we need to press tab on it because that will give us access to the geometry. And up here, you can switch between vertex object. We need to go back to that mode in Blender. And by default, when you come in, it's in object mode. And basically you can click, click on an object and it'll select it here in the outliner. But to edit an object, we need to press tab on it because that will give us access to the geometry. And up here, you can switch between vertex, edge, and face select. You should learn these hotkeys. It's one, two, and three. To select between them. Ah, you that's easy. You could also hold the shift key and select multiple. Uh, I often don't do that because I think it's a little bit confusing, but just be aware that you can do that if you want. And you can ah, that's cool. And you can keyboard to select everything. And double click A to deselect everything. You can also press Alt A to select everything. And you can hold the shift key to select multiple. And if you, it works as a toggle, so if you click again on them with shift pressed, it toggles between the selection. Okay, finally we're going to start editing this mesh a little bit. So if we're in edit mode here, I press 3 to go into face select mode, and I click on a face. And I can press G now to move it. In 3D space it's quite difficult to place something if you just press G and move it. So you can press shift space and G to enable this little gizmo here. Shift. And this way you Base. can basically just drag it like and this G. instead. It. And then if you drag on one of these axes, it'll really make it ah, that's... something up or down or left or right. God, that's so much easier. Pressing shift space and G all the time is a bit tedious. So you can also use this drop down up here and enable the object gizmo move by default. So now when we select something, you'll always have the option to be able to drag it out like this, drag it up, and drag it out. One more thing about movement is if we press one on the keyboard to get into vertex select here, and I pick this vertex here. If I press G, it'll move it anywhere. But if I press G again, it'll actually slide it. It's a sliding method. That's really handy to do. If you want to just slide its vertex along here, or this one. Oh, that's so... Slide it, you press G again. God, it it these tips are so useful. The next one is scaling. So if I select three on the keyboard and I press this face here, I can press S to scale it. This one, scale it, 
up and down. And when you scale it, if it really moves like this quick, it's because you press scale when you're right near the center of it. So I recommend that you move your mouse out a little bit, press a scale, because then you have more control when you scale it up and down. Also, when you scale something, if I select these two faces, I hold the shift key and select both of these and I press scale, you can see that it scales pretty much the whole cube. Maybe that's not always what you want. You can then press period on your keyboard and by default it's using medium point, which is in the center here, but we'd switch this one to individual origins. And now when you scale it, it just scales it along its own individual face origin here. So maybe that's what you're after sometimes if it doesn't work the way you want. But let's go back to medium point, which is also common to use. The next hotkey is E to extrude. And if I select this face and I press E to extrude, basically it just takes that whole face and it extrudes it up. This is really useful when it comes to low poly modeling. You can click on any face and press E to extrude it. E to extrude it again. E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude. You can go crazy with this. E to extrude, E to extrude. And when you combine this with S to scale, you can quickly start shaping out objects. So you E to extrude, S to scale. E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale. And the more you become comfortable with this method of just scaling and extruding, you'll be able to create something. Let's go all the way back down here to a small object. Let's colorize the whole object. I'll press A here, S to scale it to zero here on the left. The mouse has to be over the UV here to scale this UV 2D space here to, to zero. Press G to move it. Let's move it back to a gray color here. We'll recolor the whole object now to gray. And let's say I just wanted to create something like um, a skyscraper or something. Then basically if I just, what we've learned so far, let's move these out a little bit. And then here, select this one, drag it up a little bit. And now press E to extrude, S to scale it down. E to extrude again, E to extrude, S to scale. E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale. And then we could just narrow it off here. E to extrude, S to scale. E to extrude, S to scale. E to extrude. Let's make a little ball here. E to extrude, S to scale. E to extrude, S to scale. You can also type in values. If you wanted to scale this infinitely down, you can type zero now. And that basically scales this face now that we learned before down to zero. And now we've created something that could be turned into a skyscraper by just extruding and scaling and moving a little bit. Let's say we selected a few of these faces now like this. There's also some tricks with extrusion here. And if I were to press E to extrude now, you can see that it just doesn't really know what to do. It just slides it up and basically nothing really happened there. So let's press Ctrl Z and try that again. And this time we press Alt E instead. And then we do extrude faces along normals. Now, magically, it just expands outwards. The normal of the face is a line that faces instead. It doesn't really uh, yeah. move. Let's say we selected a few of these faces now. Let's, let's just see if we can recreate that. So, we move over a little bit. We'll add in uh, A, no, Shift A. Yep, there we go. Add in a cube. Shift it over here. We want to, no, select all of this. And then scale zero. No, on this side, select all of this, scale zero. And then we're gonna G, move it across to a gray. Uh, wait, this. Wait, if we just hide this one. Wait, where's this one in our collection? Do we put the cube in the cube? No. How do we put this in the collection instead? Unlink. No? Add users? What? Let's go back to layout. Let's go here. Let's push. No. Right, let's delete, oh no, not that one, just the, I don't get how this is selecting, these are both the same thing.
it because I've added it in. I added it in here, maybe. How far can I go back? I don't think this is still doing it, I think. Edit undo. No. Delete. Faces. Has that got rid of it? Maybe. Right, let's uh I'm gonna shift this on the Z no on the X axis. Put it away over there. I'm gonna do shift A. Right, why are these not showing again? Gotta reselect it each time. It's really annoying. Okay, uh can I hide that then? Yeah, okay. If day mesh cube, and then we'll put it on the round. So shift up on the Z. How do I? We go here. Z zero. No, that puts the center. Yeah, no, that doesn't matter for the moment. Okay, so G, Z. Let's shift it up by a meter. Maybe it's exactly a meter. That looks about right. Okay, so we're gonna scale it on the y-axis, down. I'm going to scale it on the z-axis, down. Uh, if we do 0.5, and we do this as point, no, it's point 0.5, then that should put it on the ground. Yeah. And then what we've done, we just selected the top face. So we go to edit mode, face, click top, and then we're extruding up, and then we're scaling in. Oh, did it a bit too close. And then extrude up, and then scale. Oh no, no scale on that one. Extrude it up again, scale out, extrude up, scale in, no. Uh, extrude again and scale in and then we'll move our camera up a little bit extrude up again uh, extrude up scale in extrude up extrude up and scale in extrude up and let's scale this mm. no let's not do that. Let's keep that straight. And then we'll, we'll extrude up this last bit and we scale zero. Okay, okay. Slightly different layout, but. Uh, right. Can we. We select all of this uh, with. Equity. That selects all of that, yeah. What happens if we move them up? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. And just on the X axis. Actually, let's keep that small. Let's go down to there and G, Z. Make that a bit taller. Oh, shift up, okay. And then we're selecting all of the faces here. And then extrude at the moment just goes up and down, which is what he did. He said we didn't want. 
Uh, but this is the bit that he's telling us how to pour it down to zero. And now we've created something that could be turned into a skyscraper by just extruding and scaling and moving a little bit. Let's say we selected a few of these faces now, like this. There's also some tricks with extrusion here. And if I were to press E to extrude now, you can see that it just doesn't really know what to do. It just slides it up and it basically nothing really happened there. So let's press Ctrl Z and try that again. And this time we press Alt E instead. And then we do extrude Alt faces e. along the normals. And now magically oh. it just expands outwards. The normal of a face is a line that faces perpendicular to the surface of the object. And by using extrude along normals, it takes each face and goes, Oh, my normal is this way. Oh, my normal is this way. My normal is this way. My normal is this way. And then it extrudes it that way instead. There was another thing we spotted, and that's if you do Alt E again, and then you do extrude individual faces. And now suddenly it takes all four of those faces and extrudes them individually. Also really good. Now if we scale it, uh, remember now we've got the medium point, which is why it scales it down. So if you wanted to get rid of that, remember we press period and switch to individual origins. And now when I press scale, it scales those down. This would be a really strange skyscraper, so we're not going to make a skyscraper. There's one more method that you can use to extrude, and if you select any face here, I press V on the keyboard into face select, and I get this face here, I can hold the control key down and right click, and that'll extrude it automatically to that location. Just hold the control key and right click, and that'll follow along. One good thing to keep in mind here is if I select this right. face here, let's go back to that a second. And if you select any face here, I press V on the keyboard into face select, and I get this face here. I can hold the control key down and right click and that'll extrude it automatically to that location. Just hold the oh, key wow. and right click and that'll follow along. One good thing to keep your difficult to do that if I select this a little bit and I press one on the keypad to go into front view. Now if I hold the control key and right click, I know that everything will be aligned perfectly. Ah. So mouse button, you can see that and we can even go to side view here you can see that it's perfectly straight this one behind be aware though that when you do this method you can so you don't go too sharp if i were to go too sharp here then you can see we have this back face problem that we described before let's cancel out of this one control z a whole bunch of times so we go back to here uh, there's another uh, hotkey that's really useful and uh, that's to rotate things and r is the hotkey for that so if you just press r on a face here you can see that you can twist it here, I'll select this one, R to rotate it. And if I have multiple ones selected here, I press R, it'll rotate it. You can combine R to rotate. So if, if we select this one and you do E to extrude, and you press R to rotate, E to extrude, R to rotate, E to extrude, R to rotate. This is also quite useful. You can also rotate around a fixed axis. So if I select this face, I press E to extrude it, and then I press R to rotate it. This also works for moving and scaling things. But if I press the keyboard now to represent one of the axes, like Y, for example, to represent the green Y axis, you can see that it created a guideline here. And now it forces rotation around that axis. If I were to switch to X, it'll rotate it around the X axis. And if I press Z, it'll rotate it around the Z axis. And this is mm -hmm. a really useful way to force rotations if you want to do it around one axis. Also, when you rotate, you can type in the amount that you want to rotate. If I press R to rotate, I press Y to rotate it around the Y axis, and then I just let go of the mouse now, and I type 90. Then it twists that face. But be aware, you don't want to rotate that much because it breaks the geometry. So if we redo that on, do R to rotate, Y on the Y axis, and then type in 45 degrees. Okay, another useful hotkey for hard surface modeling is uh, I to inset. So if I select this face and I press I to inset, you can see that it just creates an inset face here. And if I wanted to now, we could extrude that one, for example. And you can also, after you do I to inset, you can also extrude downwards to sink into the object. That's quite cool. I to inset, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, I to inset, E to extrude. And you could create a, like a sci-fi skyscraper or a building really fast doing this method. So remember, we've got G to move, S to scale, E to extrude, I to inset. And these keys are lethal when it comes to uh, low poly modeling. So you should really get the hang of those. Do it as much as possible. When it comes to insetting as well, let's say you select multiple faces like these. I hold the shift key to select multiple ones. 
If I press I to inset now, you can see that it creates uh, one single inset for all of these faces. Quite often this is the way you want it, like let's say you want it to extrude. That could be quite common, maybe you have a, a building complex or a pentagon or something like that. <laughs> then uh, you want to do that. But sometimes when you do I to inset, you can press I again and that makes individual insetting. And if you extrude those, then suddenly you've created individual faces. Delete this one now. I'll do Shift A and create a new cube, so we're back to where we started. <laughs> There's some monster there, the but out of this one now. I do go tab into edit mode. Maybe slide this one up. Let's press these two with the Shift key, scale, and then I press X to scale it on the x-axis. Here, let's move this one up a little bit. E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, E to extrude. Let's say we just have it like this now instead. Now you could create, for example, if you wanted to expand here, E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude, E to extrude. And remember with inset now as well, if I select a few of these faces, I to inset, and I've already got the individual, you can see at the top there, individual is on. Uh, so you toggle with the I again if you wanted to just inset it like this, and you can inset it again. You can start creating a lot of details on your objects by doing it this way. And here, let's say we wanted to create uh, an indentation for something that could look like a, a roof. I hold the shift key and select these two faces. Press I to inset, E to extrude it down. Select these two with the shift key, I to inset, and E to extrude it down. So now we're starting to be able to model maybe a side by city really fast this way. I also want to show if you've got the mirror modifier on, this is another question I get a lot. A lot and you press I to inset, sometimes you want this center face here not to appear. And there's a hotkey for that. And if you press I to inset and then you press B on your keyboard, it will magically remove that one if you're using the mirror modifier. We're gonna cover the mirror modifier later on, just so you know now though that B is the hotkey for boundary. And that way you'll get rid of that center face. Uh, All right. If B doesn't work for you like this, it could be because you've selected individual faces. So if I have these two selected, I do I to inset, I to inset again. Now suddenly I do I to inset and then I want to do B. It doesn't work. And no matter how hard you press B, it won't work. And that's because you've got individual on. So toggle off individual first and now B works. So just a little side note. One more thing that's useful is... I think some of this I'm going to come back to after I've here. You can watched it. O, which is a hotkey for proportional editing. You should really learn these hotkeys, by the way. They'll save you a lot of time, but you can also press it. And now when I press G, you can see I've got a little circle around here. And you can use the scroll wheel now to change the circle. And this way we can proportionally edit the whole object here, which is really useful. Maybe not for a skyscraper, but there'll be many times, especially if I wanna make some, uh, let's say you had a little building and you wanted to make some more character on it, or you were creating an island and you wanna drag up the surface, or you're creating stones or something like that. You can switch up here from different, uh, the default one here is smooth, you could also do random for example. And now when you move, it'll start moving things randomly, so that's also very useful. Let's put this a little bit to the test now. If I hide that one, I do Shift A to add a new cube here, and let's start fresh. I like going fresh. Let's say you want to make a crate now. Let's make an actual object that we could uh, be proud of. <laughs> right, let's uh, pause that a second. What we're going to do, we're going to take our new monstrous cube uh, and we're just gonna shift that along on uh, X is it yeah we'll put that over here again and for both of these what we want to do is just hide them so they're there but we don't need to worry about them right back to this so shift a we want a new cube where is our new cube Uh, is it because we had that selected? Have we got a, a cube within a cube somewhere? Oh, we do have... Let's undo that. Right, hide that. Click on the collection. And then shift A, new cube. No? Has it gone there again? Why is it over there? What's this door about as well? Maybe off of edit mode. 
Why? This keeps breaking as well. Right, maybe if we're not in edit mode. Should they? No, should they? New cube. Okay, that's giving me a new cube at least. But why is our origin not at zero? Item zero, zero, zero. How do I reset the origin? Cursor. How do I set view? Cursor here. Zero, zero. There we go, okay. Let's reset the uh, rotation of this as well. Okay, so that's exactly at the origin. That's fine. Right, we can hide this one now. We have a new cube. I'm gonna do this crate object that we're gonna have a look at. When I create a new object, often you have to go back into the shading tab, by the way, and then when, when the object is selected, you switch back to the material that it disappears, you know why. Because when you create a new object, it won't have that material back. Uh, edit mode? No. Why do we not have it here? Oh, it's still in the same collection. So we move that into the collection. Can we see these? Yeah. Why have we not got... Ah, shading here. Do we have to drop it in again? Shader editor? No. Before we went. None of those. Okay, let's uh, take our file from here. Or we drop it in here. No. When we've got that selected. No, don't think that's right. Right, so what, what are we missing here? We've got our cube, this cube. No. Object mode. Maybe it's not object mode. Maybe it's uh, texture paint. No. We have our object selected. Can we drag it in here? No. we can drag that in. Yes, okay. Now we can drag that. Now we can take this. And not linear. Closest. And then UV editing. Take this. We zoom this out. Here we go. Right. So select all here. Select all here. Let's get it down to zero. And then we move it to our color. So if we're going to make a barrel or a crate, maybe something like this. The A, G. Not quite there. Here, a G. 
I want to go lighter. It's difficult because when it's selected, it looks like a different color. Okay, we'll do that for the moment. And then we go back to layout. And we view it with our... Oh, we don't have a light source, that's why. Can we add back our light source? see what we've learned. We press tab into edit mode. A, a, just make sure A to select everything here. Tab into edit mode. Here, no. Press A, scale zero. Why is tab? Enter. Why is the no? And I press G here to move these UVs it's called to here. Why is there no edit mode here? What am I doing differently? I don't want to do any of this. Oh, what? Is it because I wasn't in the collection? In the scene collection? No, there's still an edit mode here. Oh, I don't know. There's something there that wasn't working. Leave it as is actually, let's leave that there. Right, so select a cube, A. Eh? Let's uh, move it up a little bit. Make a round box, like a wood box. I press three on the keyboard now. And now I've got face select. That's what we switched to with three here. Now we press I to insert. Oh. And we had individual on from before. Normally you'd probably get to this where nothing is happening. A, but three, press I. Again I. To switch on individual to get this magic thing. And then remember what we learned something else. We did Alt E to extrude along face normals. And I drag it in all of it. And now we've already created something that looks a little bit like a crate, a box. That brings us to another technique that we could do. And if I select, I press Q on the keyboard and I hold the shift key to multiple select these edges here now. Here's another thing, Control B is bevel. And if I press that and drag it a little bit, it bevels the edges that I selected. There is also a way to do, control if I select these B. at the bottom here, I hold the shift key, Control B to bevel. If you expand this little one at the bottom here, you could actually increase the number of segments if you wanted it to be rounder. When doing low poly, I rarely use that, but it's good to know that you could actually have more levels to this one. There's also something called shrink and flatten. Uh, if I press 3 to get into uh, face selector, I select these faces. And then I do Alt S to shrink and flatten. That's another method that you can do. We've got actually proportional editing in the now. It's probably turned out a little bit weird. So let's deselect and do Alt S. And this basically shrinks and flattens these faces that I do. It's different from scale because if I press S to scale, it'll scale those faces only. But if I do Alt S, it'll uh, take and shrink and flatten the whole mesh. If I do it inwards, it'll shrink. I've already mentioned it a few times, but you can also create additional geometry. So I've got this cube here selected, and then if I do Shift A, when I'm when I'm in the edit mode, remember, I do Shift Sweet, A, then I can add a cube, and I'm still in the same object here, but we've got additional geometry. This is why it's already colored because we're in the same object now, but we've got more geometry, more mesh data in here. If I do Shift A again, I could add uh, an icosphere, for example. And let's move that one to the side. Often when I model, even if I do an entire island or a car or with loads of different parts, I often model it in the same object, but I have these different meshes. 
And when you press Shift A, it'll create the geometry wherever this 3D cursor is. I haven't really mentioned this 3D cursor, it's just been sitting there in the center all the time. You can place that one by holding Shift and right clicking somewhere, and that'll move this oh. cursor. If you click on an object, it'll actually figure out that you wanted it on that surface. Why was it so moving from, for me before? Right click there, and then I do Shift A, and I add another cube. It'll place the center of that cube right there. Sometimes you want to have really specific control of where you place this cursor. So if I want it to be right in the center of this face here, I have face select on here, which is the only circle. Thing. Then you can press Shift S and do cursor to select it. And that will place that cursor right there. And I often use that to place it exactly where I want it before I do a Shift A and maybe I wanted to add a cone there. Also, when you add Shift stuff like S. this, like the icosphere, for example, let's create a new icosphere. Shift right click over here, Shift A. Let's create an icosphere. Then you have, the, often when you create something, you have, the, for example, subdivisions here. You can step this up if you want more or less detail. And if you don't see this one, it's probably because it's collapsed down here, so you have to click on this expansion thing. Now we can use what we've learned. Let's delete everything that we've done so far in this building. Gone. If you want to recenter this 3D cursor to the center, you can press Shift C to recenter it down here in the scene. Let's Shift A, add a cube. We're going to make a tree now. So I tab into edit mode, or first we need. Right, so what we're going to do, we're just going to hide this. I'm going to do a new. How do I set the cursor to the origin? That's the... There must be a shortcut for that, right? Rather than having to go through to do all of those. Right, so we're adding in a new cube. Oh, which we've done wrong again. Why have we done it wrong again? Because we've got that selected. No, stop giving me that. Right, tab. Cursor. There must be a way to do this. And then we have that hidden. The shift A gives us a new cube. Yes, okay. But this isn't within the collection. To go into the shading tab because this time we created a whole new object, so we lost this material setting. So I switch back to the material, go back into this UV editing here. Let's do A on the left side, scale. Wait, how did he? This time we created a whole new object, so we lost this material setting. So I switch back to the material. Oh, I don't want a new material. I want a material that already exists. Ah, there we go. Right. And then hit no. Can't find that. Uh, fading. Let's delete this one. Material one. Okay, now it's where material one is. And then here, is it just going to shrink it down again? We'll go back into this UV editing here. Let's do A on the left side, scale zero. Press enter. G to move this little dot here as well. Onto brown. And now let's create a tree how we learn. We scale this down a little bit. Maybe I view a little bit from the side. I press control. Wait, so he's just doing it in this scene. Do you not have to go into the layout scene to... No, it doesn't look like you have to do that. Okay, so we take this face. We've got face select, we've got this one. And we scale it down. Oh, down. No. Scale for him further out. That's easier. Yep. And extrude. Let's hide. Wait, I need to re-click this so that it registers on here. Yeah, okay, then we can hide that. We'll take this, we'll shift it across a little bit. And then extrude. Control and a right click, S to scale. Control to right click, S to scale. Right, okay. Yeah, it's in the, the other method. So let's zoom out a little bit. So we control, right click, no. Oh god. What did I do? Did I do shift? I did shift right click, not control right click. 
God, I'm gonna do that so many times and it's gonna get so annoying. <laughs> right, cursor. Can I move cursor to origin easier? Right, uh, blender, move cursor to origin. Close enough. There are ways we can move. The first is to press Shift and C. So let's say we've got the cursor up here. Shift, Shift and C. Right, okay, good. That'll be. That'll do. Right, so let's scale this down. And then we're going to uh, control and right click. And then scale it down a little bit. Control, right click. No. Nope. Something like that. That could be alright. And then scale it down. Control to right click. Just to scale it. G to move it if you want. Purposely, I made a small step here. Because now, when I select the side face here, I can press either E to extrude it, or I can look from the side here and control right click. And then an S to scale it to extrude that one. You can even do two branches at the same time with what we've learned. If I select a shift, select these two, and I do Alt E and extrude individual faces, an S to scale them. And remember, if you don't want it to scale down towards the medium point here in the center, you press period and you go to individual origins and then you try scaling again. And when you have these two faces selected, you can actually move them up at the same time. You could press R to rotate them together. And you could press Alt E to extrude. This time we'll do it along face normals and G to move it up. So now we've created a basic stem of a tree and then I wanted to create some leaves here as well and we've learned most of that as well. So if I shift and right click at the tip here of that face, I placed my 3D cursor up here and then we do shift A because we wanna, we're want we still in this object remember now, but I do shift A and let's add that icosphere again. And we can play around with how many subdivisions we want, but let's keep it low poly looking. So we keep it at two. And then I can press S to scale this whole thing up now. And here's the beauty thing that we learned before about quick colorization. Now if I go to the left side here, hover with the mouse, press A to select everything here, S to scale it. Right, we'll do that in a second. Let's just mess around a few more, a little bit more with this. So, oh no, don't want to do that. Let's do this. Let's select some of these. And then let's do G and shift it around a little bit just to give it Right, and then we're going to come up the back here. We're going to come out here. Why is it locked to that axis though? I'm sure he told us this. But it's all right, don't need to worry too much. You need to move it up. And then scale down a little bit. And then let's do a long branch here. Let's go G up. And then shrink it. And what we can do is what we learned before, which is the ring cut, right? Which is shift control R. And then we can move that down to like here. And then we've got a new face here that we can use. If we select three for faces, uh, let's do uh, let's do a face out here, and then scale it down, and then let's extrude out a little bit here, move it back a little bit, and then let's rotate. Uh, Rotate Y, no, rotate Z, yeah, rotate Z, and then rotate Y as well. So then when we extrude, we're going out this direction, and then we'll scale it down. I mean, it's kind of a bright tree, but it'll do. Uh, 
right, let's rotate this face uh, on the x-axis. Extrude up here. And we'll go shrink down to that. Yeah, and then one more pop up here. Okay, and then what we did was uh, Control A, no, Shift A, New Icosphere. I'm going to move it uh, on the Z up. Oh. Uh, that's way too many things, so. Oh, no, Shift A, Icosphere and way down. Two should be okay. Yeah, two's okay. And then we want to scale it. And we want to move it to like one part of this. And then select all of this, scale it to zero. Uh, yep, yeah. and then we want to move this, give us our colors say dark green uh, yeah you can see how this is going to be a tree quite easily press zero press enter and then still over here g to move it and move it to green now we're coming to a really important method when we want to select something since we're in this same cube object here but we've got two sets of geometries we've got the tree trunk and we've got this ball of leaves here instead of selecting all of this individually with shift now there's an extremely, extremely, extremely useful thing. You should definitely learn this one. And that's the L hotkey. If I hover the mouse over this ball of leaves and then I press. Oh, L, wow. That's so useful. Select all <laughs> I, was, I was a bit worried that, there. That's select linked. Since all of these vertices are connected to each other, if I press one on the keyboard, you can see all of these have lines connected to each other but none of them have any lines that connect or vertices that connect to this tree trunk. And that's how Blender will know that if you press L while hovering over one of these, it'll select all of these. And as I said, I often model in the same object here, but with multiple features, like on the tree here, for example. And this is by far the most effective way I've found to, uh, to quickly model things in the same object. That'll bring us to another hotkey, and that's Shift D to duplicate things, because mm -hmm. we want to have a ball of leaves here and here as well. And now if I press Shift D, I can duplicate this and it'll follow my mouse now. And we can try to place it a little bit here, but sometimes we have to tweak a little bit. But let's place it there and we can use this gizmo. Remember, we enabled that one up here so it's permanent. So we, up here, we've got the move object gizmo. So we can move it just along these axes here to make sure that it's pretty good. And then again, Shift D, we move it to here. Okay, we need to align it a little bit. So let's move it into place like that and now we could press l to select these and if i press l over that one it'll add that one and l over that one and now you can also you can actually press shift l to deselect that works the opposite way and if i press l here now and s to scale it r to rotate here i press l to select it s to scale it r to rotate just randomize it a little bit l to select it s to scale it and r to rotate Remember, well, we also learned this proportional thing that was quite useful. So we press O or click up here. O toggles the proportional editing. What was he doing there? And R to rotate. Oh, Remember, just well, just slight variation, so it's not. Thing that was quite useful. So we press O or click up here. O toggles the proportional editing. And if I select this vertex now and press G, you can see that I can move this, and it proportionally edits the tree now. So remember. Right, let's uh let's just do some of this l to scale it down on the lower branches give it a little rotate so it's not so uniform and then this one l no, just new one l scale down a little bit rotate around and let's move it out a little bit more so you might be able to see some of the branch no we're too far out there this one here is a bit too big i think we want to be able to see some branch there yeah oh not j l yeah 
down a little bit. Okay. Remember, you can use the scroll wheel now to scroll this in and out. Ah, uh, yes. How... So, we're going to do vertex. Oh, no. Did I just skip? I did just skip. Whereabouts were we? Duplicate. Connected proportional editing, that's where we just got to. You can select connected only here, and that's pretty similar to how L felt. Something else. Right. I'll scroll this. And if I select this vertex now. Right, so vertex, select with O. And then if we move this up, no. And press G. G. See that I can. Uh, so it's not. Mm. We've got the vertex selected. We've got the proportional editing. And we press G. Ah, yeah, okay. But yeah, this is moving the, the whole tree and the others. Right, see? So. Move this and it proportionally edits the tree now. So remember, you can use the scroll wheel now to scroll this in and out and see how much it should affect. And here we see something that when I scale this one up, it starts dragging the tree branch or the tree trunk as well. Sometimes you don't want that. And with proportional, there's something called connected. If we click on this one again, you can select connected only here. And that's pretty similar to how L uses to select things. Now when we do G to move it, and you see that there's a hollow point here in the center, and that means that it'll only affect the vertices that are linked together, so that are not connected. So if you just wanted to change this ball of leaves and nothing else, then you can use that method. So let's use this one to G to move it, D to move it. And now remember, you could also toggle it here to random. And that's becoming quite useful because now when we drag it, it'll do a little bit random. We'll go here to random. Ah, okay. Because there's more interesting shapes. tweak it about a little bit and even with this you can just move the tree around a little then like yeah so then any bits you don't like you can just be like oh no I'm just gonna tweak that tweak this in That's a, a little tree. Uh, let's move you. And because it's low poly, it should be. Be careful so you don't move it too far, so you start breaking. Nice and light. You see, you have some overlapping lines here. So Control Z. You'll have to avoid that at all times. You don't ever want intersecting lines like that. You can also do proportional editing with R to rotate, and then remember you could press Z to lock it on the Z scale here, and then scroll down with scroll wheel. You can add some twists to the trees here as well. R to rotate. R to rotate. And Z. Sometimes you still want to have, you can do Alt O is the hotkey for this connected thing, but if you still wanted it to affect the tree chunk again, then G to move it, and you can totally reshape this tree. Now we're going to deep dive into some more selection methods because uh, we've learned some of the basic modeling techniques now. 
So I'd say most important of all, in addition to the modeling techniques, is the different selection methods, because you're gonna be spending a lot of time selecting and deselecting things in order to do some operations on them. In fact, you'll save immense, insane, incredible amounts of time by running these different selection methods. <laughs> when you do low poly modeling, everything is about defining a quick selection method to select what you want, and figuring out the right operation to modify those selections, either to extrude or scale or modify them, flatten them or something like that. So a few things, we already did L to select the linked, very useful. We know how to already click on things like this and holding shift to click on them to select toggle multiple selections. The next thing I want to show you is loop select. And if I go into face select here, which is the on the keyboard, I can hold the alt key now, which is loop select. And I click on this edge here and now it's selected everything around here. So instead of having to click here and holding the shift key and rotating around, Instead of doing that, hold the Alt key and just click on one of these edges in between. And that loops and selects around. And that also works in this direction. It selects the whole loop around the tree here. Another method is to press C for circle select. And that brings this little circle up that you can change the size of with a scroll wheel. And then basically just paint over which ones you want to select. And then you press the middle mouse button if you want to deselect things. So you could just paint a little bit there, paint a little bit there, paint a little bit there. Oop, maybe not that, so you press the middle mouse button. And then you have to remember that when you finish with this, you press enter, and then that selection is remembered for you. So if you wanted to do something like extrude that, for example, E to extrude it, or press to scale it. Now we've got proportional, that's why it's doing that, let's disable that, scale it. So circle select is very useful as well. In edge mode, you can also do something called ring select. And if I go here, I have two press or go into edge select, and then I do alt, control, and I click on one of these. It selects the ring around these. You can also do loop select, which is Alt, and click on that one, and that selects the loop around. You can also use the control key to select the shortest path to something. If I have edge select here, I press two to make sure I'm in edge select, and I select that edge, and then I select an edge over here, and I press control, it'll select the shortest path to that one. Here I select this one, control, and select. So shortest path, also very useful. Another one I use a lot is box select. So if I go into one here to see the vertex mode, double click A to deselect everything, press B on the keyboard to box select things. Really fast way to get. And see that it doesn't pick the back faces here. If you I think want it to just, include all the back vertices, I think you need to do the B. I'll double click A, maybe I'll go into front view. One I would just add to your selection though. Alt Z to enable X-ray. And now when I press B to box select, and I slice something like that, for example, then you can toggle back from Alt-Z, and now it's selected all of those vertices around it. So maybe you wanted to just select those to do, uh, maybe you wanted to G to move them up, or E to extrude them, and S to scale them down, for whatever reason. B to box select is very useful. That's very useful, especially from an orthographic side view like this, where you really want to select, uh, if you had a, like an island, for example, with loads of vertices across the ground, then it's useful to use that method. Another one useful is lasso select. Again, if I do Alt Z to see through here in the X-ray, double click A to make sure everything is deselected. Now I hold the Control key and I use the right mouse button to draw around here. This is lasso select if you want it to really be precise like this. But I do it often and quite fast like this as well, even if you wanted to just uh, select a few regions. If I double click A here, Alt Z, you can use Control right click to just lasso select a few of these vertices if you wanted to just select a few of them. Another useful one is to grow and shrink your selection. If I press 3 on the keypad, I select uh, maybe I select that face alone. If I press Control plus on the keypad now, it'll grow that selection by everything that's neighboring that selection. If I press Control plus again, it'll expand it again. This is a, a quick method. Let's say I wanted to select, I hold the shift key, select a few of these top ones, control plus a few times, and now we've magically selected all the top parts here. If I wanted to E to extrude it, or maybe S to scale it, E to extrude What we could it, do is do like a top, top view. Like this, this, this. this. That's a very this. useful to grow and shrink the selection. Oh yeah, I said shrink selection now, because you can equally do control minus here. No. So go here. expands it, and control minus. Since we're on the topic of selection, here's another tip. You can select random stuff as well. So if we double click A, nothing is selected. I go to select here and then select random. 
and selects a random number of faces. And here you can increase and decrease the number of percent of randomness that you want. Maybe you only wanted a quarter of them selected, or maybe you wanted uh, 75% selected. Another thing we can do is select similar ones. So if I select this one and do Shift G, we can select similar faces. Let's do, for example, polygon sides. Now it selected everything that had three three edges to the polygon. So it didn't select anything on the tree trunk because that's got more four with uh, four edges. We can also do Shift G. We have to have one selected, by the way, at least before you press Shift G for the similar one. Maybe we wanted to do uh, normal. Okay, nothing was selected, so maybe we increase this threshold, and now we can see that it selected faces that were facing this one. So again, if we wanted to do the snow cap, I could just select one face here, press Shift G, normal, and then use the slider here for the threshold to say, okay, that's how much we want to be snow covered. Now it also picked some of this tree trunk here as well, but maybe we wanted <laughs> something there. I do Alt E, extrude long face normals. And let's say we also see that didn't actually, when we extrude it now, we didn't have this edge selected, but we want this to be snow as well. Then remember, here's where Control Plus is really useful. Now it added that, it expanded the selection to include all the. Okay, so we're saying if G, similar, normal, but we haven't got anything that's too similar. So maybe, you said if we expand the selection. No. No, we don't want that. Uh, Shift G. Normal's not working. Room is there? No, it's that similar sides. Look on sides, no. Area? No. Material will just be the whole thing. Who planar? Doesn't seem to pick anything up. Base map. Ah, uh, wait. We've got some options at the bottom. We do normal. Threshold. No. Ah, uh, here we go. So really what I want is one that's facing as up as possible. Which let's just say that face is almost directly pointing upwards. So we go for normal. And then we increase the threshold. And we find all of the bits that are kind of facing up. And let's just, no, oh, no. Can I deselect some of these? No. Oh no. Enter. To select it. And then can I, yeah, I can add in some extras here. Just by right clicking and selecting a few of these. And then I should be able to deselect some of these, yeah. So those ones don't make sense. Right, and then extrude Z just a little bit. Oh, no. It should be just directly Z, right? And then Control Plus. And then G here. And this is where we add our. No, why have we got different. Oh, because we've got the. They're different colours, right? So we've got the snow right on that one. Uh, so. We do S, no S, zero, no, mm. 
Kind of. It's probably not the right white. So we do control Z. Okay. Then we do G. No. Let's go to like. Uh, give it a tinge of blue as well, I think. Pretty good to zoom in here. Let's select you. How do we make these the same point? I mean, I can I can manually do it like that, but kind of. I get the idea. That's that's the important bit. And maybe we had our sun. That kind of works. So if we do here, ins insert, like, sun. Uh, take the sun, move it here. Uh, we do a little rotate. No. Oh, he's working. He's our, our strength isn't high enough. Let's do a strength 10. This shouldn't make a difference if it's the sun, right? What if we go like later in? Actually, we have it around this way. There we go. That's more like it. Oh. Rotate around Z. No, undo that. No, what did I do? No, not delete. Oh, X is delete. Okay. Uh, rendered. Okay. That was Z. Right, Z for shading. Rotate. Z. Uh, not here. No. No, I <laughs> want it again. Rotate. Ah, uh, Z. Okay, anyway. Uh, UV editing is where we were. see that it's combined we've got some faces that are brown and some that are green so to fix that one we can do a quick operation on the left here so while the mouse is over here on the left press it s to scale it while they're selected and then zero and now it's uh, to yellow because that was the medium point here but i can press g to move it to white and now we've still covered everything that was similar facing to uh, what we selected so play around with Shift G, and you can select different things here. Try to find because I wasn't work. there's also something called on there altogether, select, which is useful. So if I press L here to select all of these linked ones, and then I do F S and I type zero deselect zero, then you can see that it select deselected pretty much every other one. So maybe if you're doing like a castle wall or something with uh, all these uh, little uh, <laughs> firing holes, or if you're doing a kitchen floor or something like that, check your deselect will be able you to uh, to do that really quickly. Wait, how, how did you check a deselect? Uh, de oh, that's right. Okay, right. You can see that it select, deselected pretty much every other one. So maybe if you're doing like a castle wall or something with uh, all these uh, little uh, <laughs> firing holes, or if you're doing a kitchen floor or something like that, check your deselect will be able you to uh, to do that really quickly. One more thing when it comes to selecting and deselecting things, it sometimes is a bit tricky to see. So. I want to show you how to hide and show things. So if I press L to select all of these leaves here, and then I press H on the keyboard, then it hides those, but they're still here. Ah. If I tab out of edit mode, you can see that it's still in the object. But while we're in edit mode here with tab, they're gone. And now you can do stuff. That's like useful. Fix and maybe you wanted to tweak this one. Maybe you wanted to rotate this one a little bit, or say maybe to 
belong to there, so we fix that one. Maybe we wanted to extrude it a little bit more there, do some final tweaks. And now to bring the geometry back that's hidden, you do Alt-H and that brings it back. You can also do this for certain faces. Let's say you only wanted to hide these faces here. So I hold the Shift key and then I press H to hide that because sometimes you want to be able to see stuff, especially if you in Alt-Z with X-Ray here, sometimes you want to hide some geometry and then you can always bring it back with Alt-H when you're done. I do this very much. If I model cars, for example, and I want to uh, hide a bunch of cars that are in the same object, I just hide them, H key, <laughs> out of sight, out of mind, and then I bring it back with Alt-H. Nice. Okay, now we're gonna go into some more mesh editing details here. This is fun stuff, so don't snooze off on me now. Let's hide this tree. I press H to hide the whole object this time. Let's add a new one. We wanna bring this uh, 3D cursor back, so Shift C to bring it back into the center here. Let's hide right. this tree. Okay, we're just gonna get rid of it. Are we still in, yeah, we're still in the UV. I'm gonna hide, oh, no, it didn't select everything there. A, H, okay. I press H to hide the whole object this time. Let's add a new one. We want to bring this uh, 3D cursor back, so Shift C to bring it back into the center here. Shift Let's C. Let's that crate that we did before. So we do Shift A, we add a cube. Now remember, we added a new object now. Let's double click on it and name it crate this time. Since it's a new object here, I have to go back to the shading tab while it's selected. Wait, wait. Add a cube. Now remember, we added a new object now. Let's double click on it and name it crate this time. Since it's a new object here, I have to go back to the shading tab while it's selected. Just click this little drop down here and select the material. And here's our color effect. Remember, we do on the left side here, A scale to zero. Wait, why, why have I got this connected again? I'm confused. Oh no, Control Shift Z is undo, isn't it? Oh, uh, redo. So why are we getting that there? Where's our tree now? Our tree isn't anywhere. Our tree is hidden, isn't it? <laughs> hey, Mickey. Yep. Yeah, having a little little go. Uh, just in terms of like learning how to do some low poly stuff. So that then I can replace all the objects and the characters and stuff like that with something simple, but more along the lines of what I want it to look like rather than the ones that we had, which were just like boxes and circles and stuff like that. <laughs> Trying, trying not to deep dive too much, like, the <laughs> although it's, a, it's always a, a risk. It's going well, yeah. Um, we've done a few different ones, so... Uh, I don't know if I've got any... I think I can just open up new screens, yeah. So we were messing around with uh, creating characters and stuff like that. So this was last week and we were looking at adding in the Mixamo animations on top of a character that's just made of like blocks from Blender following along. And then we had a little look at something like this, which was just another, it was just a different way to create the character. Um, and then we imported this. Oh, where were we? Shading. We imported this into Unity and applied the animations there. Uh, didn't save it then. And then this one, we're just like learning a bit more about uh, just like making random shapes and stuff like that. This this uh, tutorial seems quite good actually. Um, been helpful for figuring out like all the shortcuts and, and along those lines. So I think we were just going to do... Oh yeah, we, we did this uh, low poly tree. 
which we were meant to hide. So I think we just do that and hide. No, that's all of it. All right, let's go back here where we put the tree in. There we go, right. Blendiger, yeah, Blendiger is great. Hey, Triangle Polo, how's it going? I'm good. Uh, yeah, Blendiger, I, I've definitely followed him along, like, with the donut tutorial. Um, actually, I might still have my, my donut. Uh, this one? Uh, is this the render view? No. <laughs> so, everyone knows this view. <laughs> Although there's no light in this scene, so it's a bit worse to see. Uh... <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we need to put a light. How do I... I think I can just add in a light, right? Uh, no, this one. Light. Uh, let's see a point light. And just move it up and out of the way. There we go. This is a little bit better. <laughs> Although, I'm not sure my graphics card is quick enough for <laughs> We can just go for this version of it. <laughs> But that was that was a long time ago that one that was uh april 2021 so i ha hadn't touched blender until like last the last thursday I started messing around with the characters but yeah it's been been going good i think it's just a case of yeah finding the right uh, tutorials for what you're looking for at, at the time and then repeating them while not watching them right so you, you can watch through the video then watch it through and follow along and then repeat what you've done without watching the video <laughs> so that hopefully it sticks but it's always always tricky with that And we're going to repeat what we did before now. I'm going to do I to insect. Oh, yeah, wait. So we we... Back to shading. Yeah, that's that's always going to be the tricky bit, isn't it? <laughs> but I think, I think the thing is, if I don't set my sights too high and just be like, okay, low poly, let's keep it all simple. And then basically I've just got some user interface kind of things rather than art side of things. <laughs> or just look at examples in real life that you can find and try and mimic them as, as closely as possible. Right, so we were going to hide this, which I think he's just done. Ooh. Post processing in Unity. We want to bring this. Uh, that might be good, actually. Details here. This is fun stuff. So don't snooze off on me now. Let's hide this tree. Right. Press H to hide the whole object this time. Let's add a new one. We want to bring this uh, 3D cursor back. So Shift C to bring it back into the center. Shift C. Let's revisit that crate that we did before. So we do Shift A. We add a cube. And remember, we added a new object now. Let's double click on it and name it Crate this time. Since it's a new object here, I could have to go back to the shading tab while it's selected. Click this little drop down here and select the material again. And here's our colors back. Remember, we do on the left side. Right, where are we adding this cube? Because it's not adding it here. Do we have to click on the scene first? I don't see a new object being added. It's got three post. Post-processing stack. Oh, doesn't work with HDRP. And so that has its own system. What? I don't know what HDRP is. <laughs> HDRP. 
Oh, the high definition render pipeline. Okay, right. Yeah, I personally, for any of the games that I'm going to be working on, uh, at least to start with, I, I don't really want to go along any of the high definition paths. I kind of want to make games that, like, any um, device can play without having to worry too much about, like, is the graphics card good enough or what kind of stuff. I think I, what I'd prefer to do is focus on the mechanics and the gameplay elements rather than... Oh really? Oh gosh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay far away from that then. Here. Yeah, that's um, it's Porsche Clint from uh, Corridor, Corridor Digital, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gone off on his own, uh, yeah. Uh, is that the uh he's he's done a couple of compositions, hasn't he, where uh he's trying to like well, he's merged people's uh like he's given them a scene to render. I mean, let's, let's let's just have a quick look at some of them. Because they are they are so good. This this one is. Oh really? Oh, do you know? Are you in this one? Just some of these are just incredible. Oh, nice. Uh, the, yeah, the marble one. Uh, da -da -da. This one. Just the it's just insane, like the amount of effort people are going into these. Uh in this one. This is Oh, has he got a separate video for all of them? Uh, let's have a look on videos. Infinite journeys. Marble machine. I'm guessing this one. This one. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> the video game one. This the uh not the one after this one. Jan B. Oh, it says the name at the bottom of it. <laughs> I I read that as the name for the one before. <laughs> so I thought yours was this claw one. Normal speed. Made in Unity with HDLP. Oh, cool. So the one after this one. There we go. Huh. 
Haha, <laughs> let's go. Nice. <laughs> How long did that take? I suppose you're also learning how to use it all, right? So it's all, it's all completely brand new. God, that must have been in pain. <laughs> a week or two? That's pretty good. I was expecting a lot longer though. <laughs> Yeah, it seems like there's so many different, uh, so many different ways of doing stuff like this. We get to the end of the playlist. Is that where it stopped? Yes, we did. We can restart that. That's fine. Yeah, actually, that's that's a good point. Because you do you do the main animation and then. What is it? Mostly post-processing for the like the render side of thing. Because that was the thing that struck me with the donut tutorial was uh, there was so much time waiting for things to render and look proper. Like I know it's because you're trying to do like photo real versions of things, but I'd much rather just uh, get on and <laughs> in progress. Right. What? Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's definitely the sensible way to do it. Right. So we're here. That's that one. That's that one. Oh, is it because we're object mode? Do it now. We do shift a uh, mesh cube. There we go. We get a new cube. Right. Why is it invisible though? Oh, it's because it doesn't have a texture on it. That's fine. Right, and then we can apply the same material. And then we go to EV, here, G, no, A, G, S, no, S, S, zero is what we want, S, zero. And then G. So we want to move it across to like here. Actually, no, let's go. Let's go somewhere like here. Darker. Still getting used to moving around the screen properly here. I think the thing that you can do in Blender where you can just fly around with WSD makes so much sense <laughs> as, uh, as someone who plays a lot of games. <laughs> e cursor back, so shift C to bring it back into the center here. Let's revisit that crate that we did before. So we do shift A, we add a cube. And remember, we added a new object now. Yeah, that is going to be tricky, isn't it? <laughs> Since it's a new object here, I have to go back to the shading tab while it's selected. Okay, we've done that bit, yeah. Down here and select material. And here's our colors back. Remember, we do on the left side here, A, scale, zero. And then G to move the colors back. And we're going to repeat what we did before now. I'm going to do I to inset. And remember, we still have individual on. If it looks like this for you, just press I again. And then Alt E to bring these pieces in here. Let's say we wanted to create some planks now here. We can do Control R to do a loop cut, and we can use the scroll wheel to scroll up and down the number of loop cuts we should have. And when I press the left mouse button now, it also offers us to place it somewhere, but I want it to be in the center now, so I do right click and then snap it back into the center. And just like that, we've created a bunch of loop cuts, and it's extremely useful to do loop cuts. I do it all the time. If you wanted to not have these to be wonky like this, you could hold the Alt key, and remember we learn how to select all the way around like this, like a loop. And then we learn how to press S to scale, but we don't want to shrink it like this, but we also learned that we can press Z on the keyboard to only scale it in one direction. And we also know that we 
can type in zero. And so, just like that, we've actually flattened this whole thing. If I wanted to do that for all of them, just hold the Alt key, select scale Z zero. We can probably do it for these at the same time. If I do Alt here, and then I have to hold the Shift key and Alt to select this one as well. But now if I press scale Z, and now because we have individual origin here on, on period selected, now when we do scale Z zero, we flatten those as well. Oh. I'll just control Z out of that one, and I'll do period. If you're on medium point and you press S to scale Z and then zero, it actually brings it into the center like this. So what you want to do these, if you want to flatten them, is that you want to be in uh, individual origins here on period. Scale Z zero. Now we've flattened those. Okay, what more did we learn? We learned that we can select the, we can press three on the keyboard to get this face select, and we can hold the shift key and select multiple faces, and we can extrude these in. And I can select two more here, P to extrude those in and we'll select two more here as well. And we can actually do this at the same time. So I select those and do Alt E, extrude long face normals. Got a few more planks there. So now we've started to create some uh, low poly planks in our objects. Let's uh, add some loop cuts here as well. Control R, scroll it up with the wheel, maybe to same amount of planks. Right click to snap them back. I've got individual origins here on period. All right, he's done more cuts. Let's, let's go back and do all of that now. Right, so here we're going uh, control R, controls, yeah, scroll R, click, click, this that's what we want, and then we want to select with Alt, the uh, Alt and Shift, all of them, scale Z zero, and then we're selecting faces like these ones. And then shift to rotate those and then shift to move around and then shift to select those ones. And then if we extrude inwards just a little bit. Cool. Is he still what? He hasn't still got a light in his soon. How is his? I don't get why we're looking so different. On the textures, is that on the He did show something around here with, where was that? In here? Yeah, uh, no. Ah, no, he was in this view. And he did texture, uh, cavity, both. This, this is what he did earlier, and I think it's because I've gone into the render view. Oh, the view short shading, sorry. Oh no, it is... Yeah, it's rendered. So, he was doing here. And this one as well. So that we know not to get any issues. Uh, so, I've got to go to this view. There we go. <laughs> That makes it look so much better. <laughs> so that's only on solid. If you go on to the... Uh, okay, there's lots of different options on each bit. And, oh, that's x-ray. Okay. And then we're adding loop cuts here, which is control R. And we're doing the same number. In the middle. Yeah, he was, he was saying, like at the very start of this tutorial, he shows all these different different ways of uh, 
setting up the views that he uses. It's uh, basically loads of people who asked him previously how he does everything. <laughs> so this one we're going to want to scale. We want to scale on the x-axis and we want to do no. No, that's not what we want to do. <laughs> it was... Was it scale? It probably wasn't scale, was it? No. So I can do scale, but this time we're going to scale it on the x-axis, the red one. Oh, have I changed? Have I flat changed? No, I still got individual orange. And yes. I press 3 on the keyboard to go into face select, and I select a whole bunch of these points here on the top and the bottom, like this. Right. So he's got those, got those selected. Scale on the x-axis. That's not what I want to do. Maybe on the y axis. Ah, it's on. Ah, oh, it's because I've got a different rotation to it. Right. That's less confusing now. Okay. And then we're going to pull out some more faces. No. Uh, three. These faces. And then underneath. And select these faces. And extrude. Uh, we can't tell at all. That looks good enough, actually. Nice. Alt E. Let's do long face normals. And now we've created some more points. That brings us to another one that's quite useful, and that's K, which is the knife tool. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's like... <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> It's a shame that you... There must be a way, actually, to, to change them over, right? I'm not sure what I think is better. If Z's up or Y's up. <laughs> but yeah, Un Unity Z up. No, sorry, Blender Z up and Unity Y up, isn't it? Like this as well. See that this one, I didn't extrude that one. You can extrude that one manually a little bit like this if you wanted to. You don't have to be so un uniform with everything, but let's select the Oh, that's, re so that's really useful. E to extrude that one in. So let's bring out the knife tool. We press K on the keyboard, get this little green dot in a knife, and then we can start slicing stuff. So let's just click here on the edges, and let's create something that is shaped a little bit like um, the texture of wood. So K here, we can even begin in the center here. Go here, there, let's make some interesting shape here. Like this, we can do like another loop down there, to there, to there. And then K, let's do one here as well. We can even begin in the center of the face here and just slice it like this. And see that it added uh, two lines here because it can't exist a face within a face without connecting edges. So it actually added these little lines here for me as well automatically. K, let's do another one here. What are we doing with these though? Here as well. And now if I go 3 to get make sure I'm in face select, I hold the shift key and I select these ones that I created. Now on the left side here, we're still on the same brown, but if I press G now, I can move the color of this to maybe a darker brown. And if I tab out of edit mode, we've started to create some colors for this. And here's where I mentioned before that doing this method could add a lot of geometry or will add a lot of geometry to your meshes. So you have to be aware if it becomes too many polygons, uh, maybe it'll affect your performance. In that case, it could be better to, uh, to do a texture map. But again, I like to keep this crisp look and for my purposes, often it doesn't add so many polygons that it becomes a problem because PCs especially, they're used to handling millions of polygons. So these extra few aren't going to be a problem. If we reselect these now, you can even do an extrusion here to get uh, this even more detailed. Mm -hmm. So let's select those again and press just keep That's quite cool. Them in a bit. You can have it like broken up a little bit. Out, and this is what it suddenly looks like. You can also do someone that are brighter. So if I press K here, slice a little bit there, maybe something here as well. Three to select the faces here and then G brighter one and let's move those out so e to extrude out a little bit tab out of object mode there so we can see it there's something called the topology of meshes as well and this is breaking a few of the rules and i'll probably get some a few comments about this because uh, when you're modeling characters and things like that you should really avoid to do what i just did here with creating a 
basically meshes that are have vertices that are in the middle of a face here because especially if you animate objects like a body or something like that where you're bending limbs it'll look really weird if i were to move this vertex out now you can see that it looks totally broken so you, that's something you have to be aware of but i don't want to rule out this method to do stuff because it's really useful if you have the static objects like a crate for example or like a stone or whatever it is then it's not really a problem i'd say you can use it i use it all the time so if we wanted to add some character to this box now we could uh, select the face here and then press g to move it or o to enable proportional editing g to move it scroll the scroll wheel down and then we can start making some uh, some shapes to this object we haven't colorized this part here so let's move that one down just be aware though that when you've used this method to colorize object or make some details then you have to be really careful with the proportional editing because it could really easily break here if i press if i have proportional editing enabled here i press g to move it you can see that we run into problems so that's something that you need to be aware of the knife tool as i mentioned as well it's got a few more tricks up its sleeve and if i tab into edit mode again i press k to go to the knife tool sometimes you want to make sure that you're in the center here and you can just hold the control key and it'll snap you to the center so then you know that you snap from one edge to the other there and then press enter so that's a good thing about the knife mm. tool another one is the, the angle constraints so if i press k on the knife tool i press there and then i press c then i can angle constraint it to an axis. ah that's quite useful. Also useful okay that was our crate let's hide that one for a second and uh, let's do shift a now to create the new mesh a cube and let's bring the shading here we need to switch the material back here as we did before go back here what am i doing Size. wrong there right so we hit uh we hit q with the crate where oh it's because i've hidden it that way okay let's redo all of that right so we should just hide it with h right Is that already a new mesh to an axis here, which could also be useful? Okay, that was our crate. Let's hide that on for a second and uh, let's do shift A now. To... Oh, it's, it's uh, got to be in object mode, right? Oh, no, shift A. Right, okay, so if I'm in edit mode, it adds it to the same object. Thank you. To create the new mesh, a cube, and let's bring the shade in here. We need to switch the material back here as we did before. We'll go back here. A on the left side, scale. Z. Right, right. Enter. G to move it to gray. And let's make stone this time. Now we're going to do something called subdivision surface. If I have this object selected now, I have to be out of not in this edit mode, but out here in the object mode. And then I can press control between one and five. If I press control two here, it applies a modifier called the subdivision modifier. And basically that just takes an object and adds geometry and smooths out the edges. So this cube nearly became a perfect sphere now. So if I would have pressed control one instead, it would have been the same as having one level here. And if I would have pressed control three, it would have, or four, it would have added a lot more detail. Okay. If I wanted to make a stone here, let's go back here and press Ctrl 2. I have to enable my screencast piece here so you can see. And now let's apply this modifier. It's in this uh, wrench tool thing here. We apply this modifier because otherwise this is actually still a cube here. But this modifier, when it's enabled, shows it the way the result should be. But we want to actually apply this one all together now. And now let's apply this modifier and transform this. So this is actually, a, instead of a cube now, it's a subdivided cube that rounded it up like this. Subdivision is really useful. You can use it when you make characters. You can make them from blocky to really round and smooth. And if I, uh, let's say we wanted to model a stone here now. In fact, let's control Z and even apply more of a modifier here. Let's go back all the way to the cube here. Control four. Let's make it really detailed like this and then apply this one. Tab into edit mode. We do it from here though. Vertex mode. And then we have proportional editing, very important here. Remember, you just divide it again twice, right? And then G to move it. And now we can start squashing the stone. So G to move. Let's just take some different. Maybe we want it flat at the bottom. So we tab. Vertex down here. G vertex. Scroll wheel. Proportional. And this is not so low poly anymore, as you can see. But that's okay. We're going to make it back into low poly. Oh, so no. We've got the random one. Scroll wheel and proportional. 
proportional editing. Uh, smooth. What's it done? It's just flattened the bottom, right? Now we've got something, but we still want to bring it down now again. So that brings us in another modifier, and that's we can apply this one called decimate that we just did for this box before as well. So we click on decimate, and we have to be in object mode now, so not in edit mode. And then I bring this ratio down on the side. You could also type in. Uh, but now we've decimated the geometry down back into low poly. So the combination of subdividing objects adding details so you can reshape them and then using decimate to decimate them again can really get some interesting low poly results for you so keep that in mind subdivide modify and then decimate right. working on this uh, one, how do you decimate there now we've got something but we still want to bring it down now again so that brings us in another modifier and that's we can apply this one called decimate that we just did for the box before as well so we click on decimate and we have to be in object mode now so not in edit mode and then I bring this ratio down on the side. You could also type in something. But now we've decimated the geometry down back into. Let's, uh, let's finish off saying this first. E, Z, F. G, let's do larger area. Z and down. Even more. I'm going to take a bit over here as well. And then we'll do a more focused one. And a bit bigger. And then Y. Okay, that'll do. So, it was a new modifier. So we're very round at the ground. Yeah. Uh, so what if I just do like uh, uh, X-ray? Let's do that. Just squidge it up. No. <laughs> oh, like this, this. This way. <laughs> They're squashing the more of the side. And then let's do smaller. Right, no bigger than that. Do it off at an angle here. Oh, right, not that. E, Y. <laughs> yeah. What am I, am I doing too big or too small? <laughs> yeah, the bottom still looks lumpy. <laughs> I mean, that's one way. <laughs> Just keep the bottom hidden. <laughs> Let's just see another couple, but we're not too fussed about. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice suggest suggestion.
<laughs> right, it's uh They found a decimate modifier. It's fine. And what do you do? Decimate and we have to be in object mode now, so not in edit mode. In object mode. Can I bring this ratio down on the side here? You could also type in something. But now we've decimated the geometry down back into low poly. So the combination of subdividing objects, adding details so you can reshape them, and then using decimate to decimate them again can really get some interesting low poly results for you. So keep that in mind. That's quite cool. Subdivide, modify, and then decimate. Working on this rock now as well, we can turn it into more of a stylistic <laughs> look here as well. <laughs> Thanks for the tips. <laughs> if I tab into edit mode, I press 3 to go into face select. We could use anything here. But oh wait, do I have to, circle select if you have to apply select. this first? Like that. Press enter. Now. Wait, right. and then uh, edit mode, face select. And then I selected a few. Oh, why did that not? Work? There we go. I just had to have the right, right bit. Oh, I can press. F. Oh. Thank you for the follow. Uh, very steady. <laughs> I couldn't see that on the screen, it's, it's too small for me <laughs> in the overview. <laughs> Are you a game developer or a 3D animator kind of? World? Or are you just interested in uh, <laughs> seeing what we've got? Turn this into a flat surface. Let's do that a few times. So I do C to circle select. Maybe those ones. Enter. So F3. And we've already typed flat in there, so I press enter. C to circle select, or first we want to... Where's our F3? Oh, enter. enter. F3. Flat select. select a few of these. F3. Flat select. Why do I not have... A bit of a problem, maybe? So we bit of everything. Have Study computer science. Ooh. Cool. No, not like that. Why has he got a different flatten? Spend some time in Blender. So I guess you've uh, followed along some of the tutorials as well. <laughs> the Andrew uh, Andrew Price one and all that kind of stuff. I kind of wish I'd, I had done uh, computer science. I ended up doing electronic engineering at uni. And it helped a bit with some of my, um, my first jobs. But the more I've done, like... Uh, I went into web development after uh, control systems, and then I went into, uh, well, now, now I'm trying out uh, other UI and game development stuff. I feel like if I'd just gone straight into computer science, I might have been here about five years earlier. <laughs> anything here, but let's do C to circle select a few faces here, like that. Press enter. Now I can press F3 here and type in flatten. I don't have that. Right? See? Select. Wait. Let's do A select twice. B to select these. Enter. F3. I don't have a flat it. Dropped out of college, never studied programming. Studying media and filmmaking. <laughs> oh, you work as a programmer, nice. I think everyone needs to learn how to program. Like it in most in most jobs now, it's always useful to have those kind of skills. Not all computer science, a bit of economics. You're not enjoying the economics side of it. I mean Ultimately, uh, I'd say, in terms of my um, degree, it's just a case of having a piece of paper that shows you know how to study. And if it happens to be stuff that you enjoy as well, then maybe that's useful. But if there's bits of it that aren't useful to you, it doesn't really matter in the long run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely.
I think with stuff like this, with with everything to do with programming that I've done so far, it's mainly been just look up how to do things and slowly over time you get better. <laughs> it's uh it's being good at googling the right uh phrases to look to find what you're looking for. That's the key skill. <laughs> That's a secret to uh, IT and development. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Google food. <laughs> Find robotics really interesting. C++ partly because of it. Because of the kind of way you do things in that language. Ooh. Robotics is really cool. There's, there's a whole world of it now. Um, and I find some of them... Like even even down to like the nano scale that they're they're building stuff now. It's really interesting. <laughs> it's fancy. <laughs> yeah, I haven't done when was the last time I did some C plus plus? I think that might have been back at uni. Because we had we had a couple of uh, programming modules in in with our electronic and electrical engineering. It's probably a lot of overlap actually on the robotics side. We did we did a few small robotics type projects. Um, but yeah, C plus plus is I can't remember much about it now. I think we were mostly using just like plain C. <laughs> And that was a bit of a nightmare. What more math and that stuff? Not how it, yeah. Well, they're trying. They're trying to teach you like a an all rounded approach. What what year are you in? Are you quite early on in the uh, the course, or is it? Because normally, like the first year or so. Oh right. Oh third third semester. So it's still the first year, right? But yeah, it tends to be like it tends to teach you like a, a rounded a rounded view of like the whole environment and then you specialise as you go later into it. <laughs> I yeah. Well, it's, it's useful. Some it all depends on your way of learning, really. I think. So for, mo for most jobs, you still have to learn the the non university way as well. Uh, but you might have some shortcuts from what you've learned in university. So it, it varies quite a bit, but yeah, that's for some people your quick path is going it on your own, and some people is uh, following along. They spent a year making a mod for Skyrim. Whoa! You think you're switching your major? That, yeah, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I suppose that's kind of like uh, on the mod side of things. I suppose that's kind of teaching you aspects of the game design without getting too bogged down in like the whole engine side of things, which is is probably just how the lecturer wanted to teach like certain parts of game design. Because if you're if you're starting from scratch, you have to figure out everything, and it can be a bit overwhelming. Whereas if you're just making a mod, it's uh, a world that's already that already exists for you. You never quite understood what he was doing, but had sort of idea how to make it. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe that's not the case there. One and a half years, not that long in the grand scheme of things. It's not like 
Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely not a waste of time. It's everything you've learnt will be useful in a way. And that's not the only thing that you were doing over that one and a half years. So I, I would never see it as that. So that was Minecraft modding. Yeah, it seems like there's a, there's a lot of people going into uh, game design and stuff like that where, well, actually, there's, there's a whole world of just the modding community as well. Just I don't think there's a lot of money in that side of things to sustain it. It's good for hobbies, but unless you're hired by a company to, to make the mods, I don't believe there's a lot of funding in it, so it's it's not really a, an easy career choice. I guess I guess some mods do like um, things like Patreon or stuff like that, or just. Try to kick for that marketplace for mods. Yeah, just because like most mods, like people just expect mods to be free, which I don't quite understand. There's a lot of work that goes into them. But then I suppose because the industry, like the whole community, has already gone on that track of it being free. I think. Some people who do it as a hobby, they tend to put in like, uh, if you know uh, this coffee site where you just get people to chuck you a couple of quid if they enjoy your mod and that kind of stuff. That's one way, but it's not going to be like an income. Yeah, that's the other thing. Is if you if you make a really successful mod and people really enjoy it, then hey, it's a case of. Uh, we could transfer across into a full game and sell that instead. The same with uh, Dota in League of Legends and all that kind of stuff. They were all mods. A lot of big games were, were mods originally. Right, why have I not got this flatten selection thing? Portal Reloaded is a mod that was so polished. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's skip back a little bit. Let's do C to circle select a few places here, like that. Press enter. Now I can press F3 here and type in flatten. Right, I, I don't have... Why do I not have flatten? What am I doing differently? He's in edit mode. He's in... UV editing. He's got part of his stone selected. Maybe I have to have it selected here and no, I don't want to rename it. Three. Hmm. Don't know how licensing works. You you can create a mod of a game that someone else sells, and you can also use their code to register items and so on. Yeah, I suppose that, yeah, if you're making money off of it. But then they're, they're also making money off of your mod. Uh, the share would be going to the game devs. I mean, but to play the mod, you normally have to buy the base game anyway. So if the mod is really successful, you can end up getting more sales of the base game so that the people can play the mods. So I, I feel like they're already getting their their share. But then, like you're saying, a lot of the assets, a lot of the time went into make the base game. It's also part of it. I don't know, it's a, it's, it feels like a very tricky situation. I think I'd do something along the lines of um, if I made yeah yeah well there is that side of things if if the game developer already had an idea of some stuff that they wanted to build into the game at a later date but uh, 
they need to do it as like DLC or something like that, then mods carve out into that space things that are like could, could probably be better alternatives that limit what the actual developer could have done. And then if they do change how they get, if they do like updates to the game and stuff like that, it might end up breaking all the mods and then that can be really tricky. Especially, yeah, if you're doing like paid mods. If someone pays for a mod and then a release comes out for the game, even just for like security reasons that breaks how the mod works, then whose responsibility is it to get that mod up and running again fixed? Because they've taken money from someone. There's There's some weird difficulties around that bit that might be the reason that everyone like stepped back away from it. <laughs> Still don't get why I don't have this flatten option. Does anyone in the comments have the same issue? Where are those comments? At, I can't seem to get the flat on from anything. See, look, it's the pinned comment. <laughs> the loop tools add on. Edit preference add on mesh loop tools. Okay. Uh, edit preferences add ons loop tools. Yeah, N Nintendo are notorious for being uh, a company that very much defend their uh, licenses. <laughs> I did see that. Uh, wait, was it the, the HD one that I saw? I think I saw one which was um, some guy was making a, a 3D version of old, like the the original, like. What was the first one? Like Oracle of Seasons or one one of the like the really old ones. Um, and he was just remaking everything in 3D. Which was quite a cool idea. Uh but yeah, I think as long as those are like free fan games, I think they might be able to get away with it. But as soon as they start charging for things. And then there's there's a difficulty there as well, is is someone becoming a Patreon for a developer? Does that count as paying towards the game? Or is it they're supporting the developer and that just so happens to give them access to their demo? <laughs> there's, so, there's, there's so much like uh, real like borderline <laughs> things there. Right, let, merge loop tools. Let's turn that on. And then let's see, do we get flattened now? F3. No, we don't get any. Oh, enter first. Hmm. I've got loop tools on. Uh. I remember a new story not long ago where somebody had made every map of the old GoldenEye game. Oh. See? Mm -hmm. I don't know. If, if you're remaking everything from scratch, I don't know. Yeah, I wonder where the like copy copyright or whatever it's correctly termed uh, gets to there. Uh, it looks like someone here is saying uh, we need to activate it again here in loop tools. Edit? No?
mesh loot tools. Maybe. Alright. Fourth time. Fourth time lucky. Nope. <laughs> Apparently GoldenEye is wrapped up in a lot of red tape. Yeah, I might have to restart Blender actually. Uh, go on the... Which opens in the upright. Now you can select purple and press button to flap in. Oh, right, okay. So it's not here, it's in here. There we go, right. <laughs> All of that for that. <laughs> Which is why it's never had a remake. Um. It's a shame because there's so much... Like... If MGM think they're in... Own the rights to that, that game... Like, they're not still going to make new sales off of Goldeneye, right? Uh, it's an old... Uh, Nintendo 64. It was, I think, yeah, it was Nintendo 64, wasn't it? It was a uh, first-person shooter. It follows, uh, it's a James Bond film that it follows the story of. I mean, for the, for the time, it, it was really good. Like, it looks, it looks pretty horrendous now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Goldeneye N64. Is this the, this the whole game? Wait. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> oh, what, is the controls impossible as well? No, I've, I've, not, I've not played it since I had an N64, so <laughs> a long, long time ago. Oh yeah, it had some weird way to like turn around, wasn't it? Like the C stick or something, something horrible. Oh. <laughs> there was an unreleased Xbox version. No, I didn't see about that. But yeah, you can see it's uh, it's got a lot to um, <laughs> a lot a lot to improve on. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. I think the only thing that I'll go back on would be uh, the N sixty four Zelda's. Those those would be the only games. Oh, and also there was a game called Jet Force Gemini. And I think those three would be the only ones I'd want to emulate uh, and play again. But just with better controls. Like, trying to... I think it's trying to emulate the N64 controller. Majora's Mask was my favourite Zelda by far. Yeah, I really like Majora's Mask. But trying to emulate that N64 controller on any like modern controller is just impossible because you had like... It was two separate joysticks, right? I oh, know it's only one joystick. Uh, uh, I was thinking that was um, I was thinking the C buttons were a uh, a joystick as well. <laughs> Just the idea of having three handholds <laughs> for a controller. <laughs> it's like. He thought that was sensible. <laughs> uh, <it's> <laughs> <laughs> Very good. How to hold an N64 controller. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you got me Joe's mask for your birthday. 
Yeah, you needed the... Oh, God. Yeah, I forgot about that. I never actually ever got that. Uh, I think one of my... Um, one of my mates at school... I just borrowed the expansion pack and the, the game off of them. <laughs> and that ended up being my favourite game ever. <laughs> Alright, let's, let's, let's uh, try and make a little bit more progress now. Right, that... Okay, so that's better. So we can just use this, this. Oh, so actually, this works really well here because we wanted to flatten our full bottom. Let's reselect these. Enter. Flatten. We learned before that we could uh, use uh, scaling on the on a mm, I'm not sure that flatten. So, uh, for example, if I do oh, no. C to select, don't move it. Enter. If I were to scale this now, it just scales it up and down. And if I were to scale it on an axis like Z, it would flatten it and widen it. Oh, it helps a little bit. And here we can actually go into press comma, and here we have a whole new selection of something called orientation that we haven't covered yet. And by default, it's set to global. So when I scale on the z-axis, it's the vertical blue z-axis here. It's a bit more like a rock. If I do scale, or if I do comma, <laughs> it's, like it's very different now. The normal is the face, the right, I miss that. I, I need to pause when I'm not okay, actually following along with him. How it just scales it up and down. So scaling up. No. F3 flatten. Yeah. And maybe here. Enter F3 flatten. We learned before that we could uh, use uh, scaling on the on a certain axis. So, uh, for example, if I do C to select here, enter. If I were to scale this now, it just scales it up and down. And if I were to scale it on an axis like Z, it would flatten it and widen it. But here we can actually go into press comma. And here we have a whole new selection of something called orientation that we haven't covered yet. And by default, it's set to global. So when I scale on the Z axis, it's the vertical blue Z axis here. But if we do scale, or if I do comma, and then select normal here, remember the normal is the face, the perpendicular angle to a face. So if you have a flat face like this, it's 90 degrees <laughs> in the center going up. That's the normal. And when we have multiple faces selected, it will be the average normal. So now when I, you can see this blue arrow is pointing away from an, an average of these normals here. So now when I press S to scale, I can do Z to flatten it like this. And we've got proportional editing on now as well, which is why it's moving the surrounding one. If we didn't want that, we can deselect that one with O, press S to scale again, and then force it on the Z axis. And then you can type zero as well. And that's basically the same as flattening. But if you don't want to fully flatten it, you can press S to scale and then do Z to like bring those faces a little bit more. Sometimes you have little squiggly bits like this that you want to get rid of. And let's say we wanted to fix this one. Let's say this face is annoying us a lot. Like this face is Like this, this bit around here. But here I can switch this uh, little thing. We haven't talked about this one, but, but snap two, I can change to vertex. If I wanted to move this vertex now onto exactly the location of that vertex, I can press G to move it. And since we had switched the vertex at the top now, if I hold the control key, I can actually magically snap it onto any other vertex. But we have to be careful because when I did that now, it looked like we fixed everything. But if I press G to move it, you can see that it's actually two vertices there. And that's a problem. You don't really want to have overlapping vertices because you have faces there now that are basically non-existent, but it'll ca cause problems. And there's two ways to fix that. First one that you can do, instead of I press Ctrl Z, and we can enable this little thing up here called Auto Merge Vertices. So if I click on that one, I press G to move it. And now if I hold the Ctrl key, and I snap it onto there. Since auto merge vertices is on now, it'll detect that, ooh, these vertices are in the exact same location, so I'll merge those into one. So now when I press G to move it, it's already magically fixed that for us. The other way to do it is if you don't have auto merge mm -hmm. vertices, you press G to move it, hold the control key, snap it onto that vertex. Then now I can do A to select everything, and there's a hotkey, it's changed now. So in 2.83, it's just the M key. It used to be a different one. It used to be Alt M, but now it's M. 
and then you do merge by distance. And you can see down there it says removed one vertices or one vertex. It's because it goes through the whole mesh and detects if there are duplicates one. So that's pretty good to do every now and then if you've got a complex mesh, just select all the vertices, do M and then merge by distance and remove all those doubles so you don't run into problems with them. I don't know if I've covered this, but I'll give you this one as well. Let's say we wanted to create a bit of a worn edge to this stone, and I press two to make sure I'm in the edge select. And let's hold the shift key now and select a few of these edges here. And then now you can press control B to do the bevel again. And we've actually done this before because I've got loads of lines here. We don't really want that many. So let's bring segments down to one. And now when we tab out of object mode, we can see that it's created quite a nice little beveled edge to this. And then if we go one, into vertex edit here we can select a few of these vertices and press s to scale them and then here maybe we want it smaller s to scale it down here maybe we want to scale it up again you can control through scaling here how much you want those uh, beveled edges to be on the rock so that's quite good for stones low poly stones okay let's double click and name this one stone uh, sometimes you want to start get nitty gritty with your editing so sometimes you want to delete faces let's say we wanted to shift select a few of these and then we wanted to press delete for whatever reason then it's a big hole here that could be a bit scary in the first time that happens but don't be too worried about it you can actually fix holes like this by if you have a hole in your mesh in edit mode click a for everything and press f on the keyboard that fills this hole mm, automatically. Okay. but it creates one big mesh like this so sometimes you can get into some alignment issues. Let's say we had these gone uh, over the edge here, like that. Let's select those, press delete, faces. Select everything and press F. You can see that it fixes the hole, but it's got some weird stuff going on here with the shading. And that's because it's created one face, so it's really finding it difficult here. But there's a way to fix it. Either we can do it manually by selecting. We know that we want the line between that vertex and that vertex. And then we can press J and that fixes pretty much everything there because then you tell uh, the mesh that I want a, a distinct edge here so that's fixed another thing you could do is uh, if we control Z out of that one you could select that face and press control T to triangulate it that's another way to fix that one also if you want to say exactly how faces should be created actually let's do control T to triangulate that one as well let's say we had this one deleted again like this delete faces if you want to have control while you create this, instead of marking everything, you can press 2 to select the edges here. And let's say I want to select this edge, that edge, and that edge. And now when I press F, it will create a face between those lines that I set here. Mm, Same thing here, okay. if I wanted to control, I could select exactly which lines and F to create. Sometimes you'll run into a problem here where the face is created maybe inwards. I'll just flip it manually now so you, you can see what I mean. Click normals. So this face actually exists here. If we do Alt Z, you can see that there's like a center point here. You can see it, that, that one. And Alt Z again to disable X-ray. So there is a face here, but remember that we have the back face calling on. So if, if we can see the back face, it looks like there's a face there. But if we enable back face calling, this is what most game engines would see, a big gaping hole here. <laughs> Sounded weird. Uh, but we can fix that in a few ways. One of them is manually by selecting this face that we know exists there, pressing F3 and typing flip normals. So that was one way to do it. The other way to do it is that you can actually recalculate the normals for the whole mesh. So let's say we flipped, we, let's say we have a few of them. Let's flip like this, let's select a few bunch, flip normals. If you don't want to select all of these manually and flip them. You I think most of this, rather than following along, Alt -N, it's just good to know that they're in this tutorial and then outside. If that ever happens to me, I can go back, come back to it. <laughs> outside and try to fix it for you. So that works quite often, not all the time, but quite often. And equally, there's this thing called uh, Alt N, and you can do uh, recalculate inside. So if you make they come up a lot. Level, then you can certainly be inside. I think knowing about the the normals is very useful. Yeah. And back to our stone here. You can also remove individual edges here. So if I press two to edge select, and let's say you wanted to. It's called dissolve. So if I wanted to remove these edges here, but not d delete them, I can press X or delete and then dissolve edges. And sometimes you want to do this as well, because sometimes you don't, let's say you have a bit of a triangulation going on like this, which might be just as like this. Sometimes you want to select all of these like that, press X, oh, really? dissolve edges. 
and that will dissolve those. I suppose, yeah, especially if I'm working with like free assets and stuff like that. Okay, another thing Probably not as much uh, attention, to, attention to detail that's gone through them. Let's hide this one, this film, and let's bring a new one. Shift A, create a new group. Tab into edit mode. Uh, first, we'll switch the shading again back to the material here. A, scale, zero on the UVs. You know this by now. G to move it on the gray. L to select this one. Actually, let's just create something here. Uh, let's do the old school stuff what we learned a long time ago now. E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale, E to extrude, E to extrude, S to scale. Uh, maybe I to inset. Let's say we have something like this now. And inset that one. And then let's duplicate this whole object now. Shift V. These are facing in the wrong direction now because before, remember, we pressed comma to go into normal, but we're going to go back into global now so everything makes sense. Slide it on this red axis. And let's do something here. I to inset this one, E to extrude. Let's say we wanted to connect these two now. So we're in the same object here, now the cube here, but we've got two sets of geometries. And sometimes you want to connect this one here. Let's slide this one out instead. So how do I go about connecting these into one single mesh here? You could just select this page. Uh, let's hide our stone. So object mode, select all, H. And then we're going to do a new mesh cube. And you just did some face edits, which is back to edit mode in here. Oh, we haven't done the shading either. Uh, this material, this uh, A, A, S, zero, and then B, put it up to some gray, and then extrude, scale. Extrude. Uh, extrude again. Scale. Extrude. Extrude. Scale. Something like that. And then insert. Extrude. And then we're going to take the whole object. We're going to duplicate it. Uh, Uh, we're gonna go to comma global. We don't know. Wait, I should have two, right? Did it not? I'm not sure we duplicated it. Right, it's where we want to be. Right, A, uh, G, X, there. And let's rotate around Z. Just do that. And then we're going to duplicate. We're going to move it on the X axis. We're going to rotate on the Z axis. And they're not quite lined up, but uh, I think what we can do is X of zero for both of them. What happens if I do them all to Z? Uh, all to zero. No, not quite. Uh, L selects all of it. Let's do Z of three. Can I put a rotation here? No, I don't want to move that. Let's do 1.5. Tool view. No, no, no. Let's look above. That looks right, actually. And then this one, we're going to say minus 1.5. And then zero and three. And then we're going to rotate it slightly on the Z. Where's that rotation value? It's got to be here somewhere, right? Yeah, 
maybe in one of these. Here we go. Uh, Press N with it selected. I just got the trans. Oh, it's down here. There we go. No, that might not be it. So L, select it. L, enter. R. some reason I'm not getting the rotation here. That's being layout. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, there you go. So in the UV editing, it's just got the transform, but in the layout, it looks like it's got, uh, no, that's the cursor, isn't it? Not the item, but it does have all of it. For some reason, uh, we're in object mode. That's good. Oh no, it's still. So, why is it not showing the item rotation? I mean, it doesn't matter, but Is it showing the middle value can middle value combined value of the transforms? Oh, uh, because it's loads of objects extruded on top of each other. There's no like. I suppose because it's got different faces here. We're not selecting a whole object, right? Well, it doesn't matter too much here. Yeah. So we're going to look at a way to join these two. Which, what do we think it's going to be? Bridge faces? I bet that's it, right? <laughs> and now this is all one connected object. Do we reckon that's it? Well, there's probably like six different ways of doing that. Uh, let's bring that video back. It might be because it's a complicated shape rather than... Yeah. I mean, the way we can check actually, if we go object, hide, and then add a new cube. Yeah, look. There you go. You got your transform here. So is it as soon as you start extruding it? Wait, not like that. Uh, no, we want this face. 
Make sure you're up. Or is it because it was in edit mode? It's because it was in edit mode. Uh, so we hide this and unhide this one. Uh, Shift H, Control H. Alright. Let's just. Oh, it was full, right. Uh, I keep on going control Y to undo things. So we can have that in there. And then this one we want to unhide. No? Just that. What's unhide? So we go in here, we want to select this, which is Alt and click, and then right click, not right click, uh, X, delete faces. And then this is what we've done. So we'll be paying attention to what you said. We do these. See that that's much easier, right? Alternate, right? Going for control, or going for shift. <laughs> New face from edges. Oh, it's just F, okay. Right, and then what I was gonna try and do is you hit this, but we go into object mode. Ah, oh, it's only one object. That's that's the issue with doing all of this on one object but multiple EV meshes, right? Because I can't, I can't export these individually for a start. Yeah, I think I'd still stick to doing multiple objects rather than multiple meshes. As long as they're individual separate things. You might have a way of decoupling everything after though. Um, okay, so I think what we were going to have though uh, uh, Which might be useful, might not be <laughs> Just select that face Type, press F3 and type in bridge And then select bridge edge loops here And that links those together And we can do Alt Z to make sure What's the difference of just saying this though? center face in there. We can actually double check it as well. I'll select the loop around there and press H to hide it and you can see that there are no faces here as well. And then Alt H to unhide. Yeah, Alt H to unhide. Okay, let's just check that this is working. I think just bridge faces seems to do the same trick. Yeah. So we don't have faces on the inside there. And Alt H. Cool. So if you wanted to link these together, Select those two, F3, bridge edge loops. If you wanted to select these two up here, we can link those together as well. F3, bridge edge loops. Let's say I wanted to model top of a table with a computer, a monitor, and a keyboard on. So do Shift A, as we've done before. We'll add a cube, and we'll go here, bring in shading, make sure we have the material selected. Go back to UV editing, mm -hmm. I select everything. I'm in edit mode now, so. Right, we've got about 20 minutes ish left. I think I'm going to take here to do a quick screen break because uh, I normally do one a little bit earlier, but I got a bit stuck in with this uh, tutorial. So what I'm going to do is just a quick be right back. Uh, maybe 10 minutes. Yeah, let's change that down. So. 600 seconds. Uh, cool. All right. Uh, we're going to stick with that. Yeah, no worries. 
thanks for dropping in and th thanks for the good luck. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been useful. But yeah, hope to see you next time. And uh, good luck with the stuff you need to do. And for anyone else watching, I'll be back in about 10 minutes. Cheers.
Right, I'm back. Let's continue on. So I think we are about to do a new scene. Oh, press tab, very important. Scale, is that, and then we'll flatten it down, maybe like... So we're going to make a... Let's go back to where we were. Bridge with a computer, a monitor, and a keyboard on it. So do Shift A, as we've done before. We'll add a cube, and then we'll go here, bring a shade in. I select everything. I'm in edit mode now, so I'll press tab, very important. Scale, Z, and then we'll flatten it down, maybe like this. Scale on the x-axis, make it wider. So we'll just make the, I'll skip the legs for now, I'll just make it thick. Yeah, uh, Mickey left to go and get some stuff sorted. You already know enough about Blender rather than following along with this, right? <laughs> Enter and make the round table pop again. So now we're going to put a computer here, and this is something I do quite often to save a lot of time. I select this tabletop, just this face here, I'm pretty in place selector, shift D to duplicate it, and you can see that it's... I'm just following along there. Or just, w just watching to, to see what's possible. Let's jump back a little bit because uh, I did I did it in different order to what he did. <laughs> I'll select everything. I'm in edit mode now, so I'll press tab. Very important. Scale Z. So we'll hey, down, maybe like this. this. Scale on the x-axis, make it wider. So we'll just make the I'll skip the legs for now. I'll just make a table top. A on the left side on the UV here. Scale zero. Enter. Very right, so quick. It's so quick. So now we're gonna put a computer here, and this is something I do quite often to save a lot of time. I select this tabletop. Just this space here, I'm pretty in place selector, shift D to duplicate it, and you can see that it's loose here. But if I press the right mouse button now, it'll snap it back to where it was. But now we've got a separate face here. So I can press S to scale that face, and S again, and press X and scale it on the x-axis, and then move it here. And then now when I press E to extrude it, we've got a computer here. And remember that I can press L on this one to select it. We're still in the same object here, but right. since these vertices are only linked to this face and the extruded part of it, it's not linked to the face anymore. Why? So the control is separate. And then I press on the left here, G, and move it to black, so we make a black computer. Always cool to have a black computer. Right, so okay. The monitor. So in the same way, I'll take the tabletop again. Wait, 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 wait. It's going too quick. It's going too quick. Okay, uh, I want to scale this again. So scale on our X go a little bit narrower and then I want to extrude up it's a bit too wide still so uh, we do this in G oh wait we need to lock to an axis so we get this face lock it to the X axis and bring it in and maybe a little bit too tall G uh, Z yeah, okay. And then we select this. And then we want to move that to a dark color. Did we not have, I don't think we had the top place selected. Uh, no, okay, and that can go up here as well. 
Shift V to duplicate it. Right click, scale it down. V to extrude. V to extrude again as the scale. V to extrude. Let's actually press L here and move it all the way to the side so we get some space. V to extrude. S to scale. S to scale again on the X axis. V to extrude. Uh, press L to select all the links. G here on the left side. Okay, so he's roughly gonna go. Let's uh, get this more in focus. Right, so he took screwed. Yeah, I found I found him from. Uh, he's got this series where oh that wasn't nearly tall enough. Wait, right. he's got this series where he does uh, ten minutes to make uh, models in Blender. So with a click and then shrink it down. Like, look, if you look at one of these ones, uh, and I was like, oh, this is great. I can learn how to make some models for, for my game. And when he gets to it, he's like, okay, and go. And like, even, even in normal play speed, uh, it's like, what, how, how am I meant to keep up with this? <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually a bit slower than uh, his previous one. Uh, where was it? Let me see if I can find this. What was the one that I watched? Oh, he's on episode 99, yeah. Wow. He's, he's done it. Let me just maximize this so I can find it. Uh, 10 minutes. And it was episode one. No. Uh, I can't find it now. It was a ridiculously fast place. Uh, I think it's ages ago there. it yesterday and I was like oh this this goes really good but it was so quick oh it was episode 40 41 this one here so yeah when he started it was like if you came through all of this and it just like went so quickly I was like uh, can't keep up. Uh, how big would you define the size of your object? Uh, so that depends on here. So you've got the scale here, or in meters, which is the same as unity. So what we did before when we did our, which one was it? This model. So this model here, uh, basically when I made it, I'm, I was looking at um, the size of things. So why can I not see the size of it here? Maybe. Oh, right. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so yeah, in the top top side here, you, you see. Uh, wait, why is that that way? Where's our character? None of these. Here we go. Your dimensions. 
I was like, I'm sure it was here. It, no, so the location is where it is on the plane. Your dimension's here. So I've got this character as being about 1.8 meters tall. So being like your average average height is probably where well, I just went for, I think 1.8 something, 8.4 is six foot. It's not average height, but um, roughly that kind of dimension. But actually, his, his arms are probably a little bit long. Why well, he looks a bit out of proportion. X is the uh, arm span here at the moment. So X is this red line. So it's your dimensions in, in this orientation. Y is the, the width. So dimensions in, along this green line. Yep. So if I went into edit mode here and I just took these and brought in, well, let's do this and rotate. No, can I do? I can't remember how to do this now. <laughs> this is definitely not what I wanted to do. Uh, where? Oh no, it's pose mode, isn't it? Uh, do I have pose? Is this no? Is this armature? Where's my armature? Oh, it's over there. Maybe it's this one. No, it's that one. Right. So we go to pose mode. Right. Hopefully, we can rotate. Hmm. Kind of. Okay, we'll just do that for the moment. And you should see that the... The X is a lot shorter now. It's only one arm width and a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, this is one of the ones that we did last week. Um, following along from another way of creating. And I think this was doing... How are we doing this? Were we sculpting it? No, I think we were just building it. There was some other way of creating it, and I can't remember how. <laughs> I don't think we were sculpting. I think it was just in layout. But after we... has to... Uh... Maybe. It all depends on um, if you want little tweaks in it. I think this is the default mesh that... I think the armature here is created by by uh, the objects that the character had. We, so before this was cut down into uh, all of these different... Uh, vertices it was just like blocks along and to add in um, like different definitions at different points actually I might actually have it here uh, we add in these ones one of these ones might be the breakdown still what do you look like no what do you look like that might be the one uh, we zoom in on him. Ugh. Oh wait, I need to. I'm still not used to how to move around this properly. Why? Oh, this is a zoom, isn't it? How do I move forward? Problem. You can't just right click everywhere and do stuff like that. Let's go back to object mode. We select you. See if I just keep zooming in, it stops at a point. 
Yeah, I've got a number pad. That's probably going to be... Right, how is this broken down, though? This was... So we've got skin modifier. But what are we using? Ah, this was what... Yeah, sorry. Try press dot. Oh, when I've got it selected. That's... Ah, that's so much better. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to use that. <laughs> be using that a lot. So yeah, the way that this one works. I can't remember where it was though. We were using the skin modifier. I mean, this is good if I can't remember how to do any of it. I think we were just extruding. Oh yeah, because this this is all it is. So this line here. That was it, yeah yeah. So why is our select weird? Oh uh, wait, we changed this. Oh. Yeah, so this was it. You could select one of these and then change the radius so yeah that's why we had all of these extra joints here was so that if you wanted to try and put like more definition so that the arm is thicker for the the muscle groups there you could change these settings here so if you want to make like a A weird stylized. Oh wait, we take these two. And you could like put really bulky shoulders, or but then it was it was tricky because I just wasn't quite understanding what I was doing, and you end up getting stuff like this. <laughs> That's why the proportions are a bit out. But it was just a different way rather than doing the blocks. Is the the only thing this is actually doing here. Uh, I think we can hide the view here. Is we've just got this stick figure. That's all. That's 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 the whole object here, and it's just because of these modifiers that we then have a mirror and we have a skin on top of it. If we wanted to add more, kind of has some way of naturally doing it but because the settings here are a bit messed up at the moment we could probably add in oh wait we're not doing this directly centered that's why uh let's do from the back here and then from the side So you could do something like this. And that's it. Like... <laughs> it's a bit unusual, but it was a different way of uh, creating a character. So actually, I think if you could just we increase the radius here and then move it down. You could do something more that's, that's more hair rather than uh, this weird... <laughs> like snake head or whatever it is. But yeah, just a, a different way of doing things. But yeah, in terms of the original question about the height, there's the dimensions here. Uh, roughly a scale of, um, well, in, in meters, so in unity, In Unity, I think the scale is all in meters as well. So if we open up our attempts at well, our endless runner that we've got so far.
There we go. So these are uh, those characters that <laughs> we just dropped in. And their height here, I think. Uh, if you look at... Well, take for example our player here. Our player is... It's not a scale of one. Yeah, 1.6. No, no, the player is just um, player is an asset from Mixamo. Oh. So there's a website. Hey, Koti fan, how's it going? Uh, so Mixamo is. We'll jump across to that as well. Uh, it's an Adobe software. Actually, I think I need to log in, so I'll just... Let's just pull that off the screen a second. Oh, that's not even on the screen anyway, is it? Just one second. Ah, that's useful to know. Uh, so let's add in our window here. So yeah, this is Mixamo. You can upload your models into it um, and then apply animations, but also it has its own characters as well. So this player model here is one of the characters in here. I think it's called Joe. Yeah, this character. And then, yeah, this is all free, which is why it's great. So you have this, actually, let me just put this on the main screen. It's a bit easier, so you can see it all. Uh, like that. Right, so you have your character, and then your animations, just like uh, a run animation. And let's say we want him running upstairs. I mean, just do it in place and that's it they've already rigged it for you they've, they've done the animations for you and like what you just saw uh let's see where's no in blender this one i think so as long as you They've got an add-on as well in Blender that lets you, that helps you rig it. Uh, but you, all you have to do is bring in your model, line up these few points that they, they asked for. See that? See that? Uh, I think we've got standard... Yeah, we've got four-finger skeleton. So then it rigs it for you. And obviously, the, the the closer your proportions are to an actual human, the better. <laughs> so th this one doesn't quite work uh, 100%, but it was just a uh, follow along with the tutorial. Come on. And then that's it. They, they've rigged it now. And then you can just do like... Uh, a dance animation. And they've, uh, and then you can just download it as an FBX file that you can just import into Unity and that's it, it's done. <laughs> so there's, there's tons of really useful stuff in here. <laughs> Still have to work on animations. Yeah, um, we we had a little play around with that as well. Uh, so you make animation controllers. So like with our player controller here, you tell it different stages to. Uh, so like at the start, it goes from the entry 
into your first animation and then you tell it on the transitions what triggers the transitions. So sometimes from our running to our jump, we have a is jumping ball that is set true. And then in our script, I think it's in our player movement script. Maybe. Uh, when we jump, uh, oh wait, our jump is in our actor. Actor state controller. We'll get there in a second. Here we go. So in our jump, we set our set is jumping boolean to true. And that triggers. Last time you tried it, I had to change it and update cycles to physics because with the animation enabled the character. <laughs> so at the moment, this I've just got a really simple jump, which is when the player presses the jump action input, we trigger jump, which goes into our actor class, and the jump if it's in a situation where it's allowed to jump, we trigger the jump function in our state controller and the state controller triggers the animator and it sets the, the ball is jumping to true. And all that means is that when we play, as we press space, uh, so the animation is locked into the intro animation, but if we press space, once we started running, uh, it swaps over to the jump animation. But yeah, that's basically where we got off to do with that. But I kind of want to start making some assets so it doesn't look so uh, tutorial-like. <laughs> so that's why I've uh, jumped across to do some Blender stuff. Uh, so... For which bits? Uh, there's basically quite a few different tutorials we've been using. Um, we used, uh, I think it was practical programming. Mm. Yeah, so this uh, YouTube channel has this uh, Endless Runner series and we followed along with this. Um, it shows us how to make a character that you control and move around and spawn the tiles and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we, we kind of mixed that in with... There was another tutorial about how to use the... Um, how to use the updated player controller. Because this is before the newer player controller in Unity came out. Uh, can't quite remember who that was. That might have been Code Monkey actually. I think this was the one that had uh, I think it's the new input controller. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was this video that we used for the input. Yeah, the new input system package. So it was a combination between this and the Endless Runners tutorial. And then I think there's been other ones as well. Uh, we've been looking at doing inheritance with the, the various classes and all that kind of stuff. And there's a whole load of uh, coding tutorials that I need to look through again. But yeah, pretty much when whenever we get to an issue, we're like, Okay, let's find a good tutorial that covers this kind of thing, but apply it to our game. So we're not following step by step. Uh, we're trying to adapt it to what we what we want to use it for. So this is useful to learn how to use Blender a bit better. But uh, I think tomorrow I'm going to start going through and actually creating assets and seeing if we can figure out what we were doing right and what we're doing wrong. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm going to try and get to the end of this before we wrap up the stream. I normally finish around about six. Uh, I need that. We don't need this. Uh, don't save for them out. Okay, so we were making. Oh wait, I need to put that. Put that window back on. Okay, so we're making a monitor. So it's screwed up. Screwed up again. And scale it out. Oh, just on the X axis. Okay, so about there and extrude our monitor up. Why does that look weird? Let's do. No, that's not what we wanted. We want to do. No, not that one. I think what we want to do is we want to shrink this in. Yeah, that makes it. No, not Y. Uh, X. Oh, wait, it's, it's oriented based on the normals, right? No, because uh, we just changed that. This one, global. B, e, Y. Yeah, back a bit, in a bit. And actually move this in a little bit as well. Just do L. Oh, it does just connect to this. Okay. And then we're going to move this to the back. And then I to get our screen. Set and E to extrude. And let's change G here and change this to a blue screen of that. And let's make a keyboard. So, same. I'll pick this one. Shift V to duplicate it. Scale it. Maybe move it to here. Scale. So really, he just duplicates this surface every time. And G to move it. Maybe it's a great keyboard. Say we wanted to make a chord here as well. We can do the same here thing. We do. We can do the same thing. I do Shift D to duplicate it. Scale it down. Maybe scale it on the Z axis. Let's look from the top now, and then just remember we could hold the Control key and then just right click. Like this, and then connect it to the monitor. There. Maybe move it into the monitor. And it's hanging in the air now, so maybe we want to fix that. I'll go into 2 to edge select. Select any edge here. Let's pr press O to enable proportional editing and G to move it down. Scroll it up a bit. See that we're distorting the computer now. We don't really want to do that. So let's right click to cancel that and do Alt O to make sure we only have the connected here. This one, remember, that it's connected only now. G to move it. Now we're only affecting the cord, no matter how big we go. So we can hang the core down to maybe there, select that one, scroll it down, that one, scroll it down. So now we've created a, a low poly cord that's hanging. Maybe we want it to even hang off the table a little bit. Have to be careful, maybe we want to rotate it, bring it down, move that one there. Just make, make sure you don't twist the, the stuff too much. I probably get, went a little bit overboard here, so be careful with that. So this is still, again, the same object, but let's say we wanted to detach this now into a separate. Let's say we wanted to detach the monitor. We can actually double click A to make sure nothing is selected. Press L over the monitor here. And now there's a hotkey called P. And then separate selection. And now we've created a separate one here. And that's, ah, this one first here is the, that's what we were looking for. If I control Z that, you could actually do this as well. You can select everything, P, and separate by loose parts and now it's created all of these for us. why can so i not move it now this one name this one monitor here is our computer here's our very basic keyboard and here's our tabletop maybe we wanted some legs on this table as well after all 
So we can do the same thing here. I do Shift D to duplicate it, scale it down, scale it on the x-axis, move it into, move it into the place of a leg here. Uh, okay, I think in the UV Slide editing, axis. you can only select and stuff that's in. Down. No, so we wait. Why can we can, we can select it now? Because I didn't mention that before, but seven is the top view. Mm. But Control seven. We must have not finished something. L to select the link here, Shift D to duplicate it, right click to snap it back move it on this axis and let's press l over this one so we select both legs shift d to duplicate it and then move it roughly to there and then now we've got uh, some legs on that table as well equally like we did with separate before you can actually bring them back into the same object again if you want to we could uh, select this one hold the shift key for all of these for example and that one and then do Control j and yeah, that so j it. j manages p separates name here that you had Computer stuff, and I think the cord is still a separate one here. So we can click that one, click that one, and do Control J to join that one as well. And now suddenly it's in one object again. So remember that you can separate it with P into separate objects. If you want to export it for the game and have everything separate, that's fine. And you can join stuff together again with uh, Control J. Also very useful. Now we're going to get into some modifiers. Are you still with me? Are you still awake? I'm better. <laughs> what time is it? 3.15 in the morning. I love this stuff. Can't get enough of it. So I'm going to keep going. So uh, we're going to do a modifier here. And it's going to be the mirror modifier. Very useful. If you want to model a space. Okay, we, we, we dealt with the mirror so modifier a bit right before. Right here with the object selected. In object mode. You go to this wrench icon. So we might be able to skip through you. Mirror. Some of this. It look a bit weird here because it doesn't really know how to mirror it. <laughs> it's mirroring it on the x-axis here by default. You can control which axis you do. I always use the x-axis for mirroring. But it doesn't look mirrored now, so we don't know what's going on. And that's because uh, this geometry is going past the center here. If I take this face and move it, you can see that it's still there, which is really strange. But it's because it's mirroring this part of the green side of the y-axis here on the x-axis. <laughs> it's mirroring that part. So in order to, to get into a cube that's mirrored, you'd have to, if you do it manually, you'd have to delete that face and then press 2 maybe and alt select this ring and then bring it back and it's difficult to know exactly how far but you can enable this clipping feature here because then it'll detect that when you hit the center here it won't allow you to go past it but we've got the personal editing so there we go so when i move it now it'll detect that Ooh, i'm going to glue you together now because we've hit the center so now if i try to move this one it doesn't work because clipping is preventing it from doing that so most of the time that's what you want to do saying all of this there's actually a great way that you should do this instead so instead of applying this mirror modifier here you go to edit preferences and then here you go to add-ons and then type here you can type in Auto mirror. I have this one enabled by default because I love this one. So make sure you have that one enabled. And now, when you click on the object, you can press N on your keyboard to get this little menu here and go to edit. And now you have this magic one called auto mirror. So click on that one. And that just did everything that I did manually. If I tab into now, it's already got the perfect select here. It's got clipping enabled. Everything's ready to go. So it's very useful. Ah, that's useful. Okay, right. Uh, so let's go back here. Let's go to object mode. Let's select everything. Let's hide it. Uh, we're going to add in a new cube. And we should be able to edit auto mirror. Did he click anything? This little menu here and go to edit. And now you have this magic one called auto mirror. So click on that one. And that just did everything that I did manually. If I tab into now, it's already got the perfect select here. It's got clipping enabled. Everything's ready to go. So save yourself a lot of time and hustle by doing that. Use auto mirror. Another useful modifier is the displays modifier. If I do shift A here, this time let's add a plane. Tab into edit mode. Let's scale it up a lot. Tab out of edit mode and control five. Cool. And now we can actually go into simple now because we just want to subdivide this one. It doesn't look any different now, but if I apply this one and tab into edit mode, you can see that it's subdivided it a lot of times here to create this grid instead. Let's actually subdivide this one one more time. So I select the object, press control two, simple, and apply it. And now we've got even more geometry here. So if you wanted to create a low poly island or a, you could uh, enable this proportional editing and then select the vertex, press G to move it, and then use the mouse wheel to start changing this. You could also, what we learned before, control right click the lasso select something and press G. And then use proportional editing here to start creating different shapes to your island. That's one way to do it, but I wanted to show this uh, displays modifier. So if I go to add modifier here, displays, and I have to tab out of edit mode to see it. Now I can click new here on texture and on this little icon here. And let's switch the type here to clouds, for example, and change the scale to this, maybe two. And then we can go back into this uh, modifier tab here and change the strength. Maybe we wanted to tweak this one even more. Maybe we wanted this one to scale four or ten. Increase this That's quite cool. So here's a, a useful thing. And if you wanted to make it, uh, maybe you wanted to add something like a water thing there, you could go into this color one and do color ramp. And then you slide this bottom one. It takes away details from the lower part of the of the randomness. So it creates like a surface of a seed. And if you're happy with this, you could go back to this modifier here and just click apply. And now we've created something that looks a little bit like a low poly landscape. We could decimate this one again because it still doesn't look very low poly. So we can go add modifier, decimate it like we did before and slide this one down. 
and that brings it into like a low poly landscape and then apply that one. We have some issues here as well. Uh, if we wanted to fix that, we could do that. We can select those two vertices, press X and dissolve vertices. So if you have some problem areas like that, X dissolve vertices, we could do one to get the side view, Alt Z to see all of this trickiness, B to box select, and then just select the very bottom. Uh, VS Code, I think it's something called like Mo Monaco or something. No, what's it called? One of these extensions. Uh, I think it's Monaco. Mm, maybe. It'll be in my settings, won't it? Control Shift K. Uh, Oh, in the preferences window. Oh, peak might be. Uh, this this the other way to look at it. Yeah, Monaco plus plus. It's just this uh extension. But yeah, I just find it really easier. Uh, I think having a good theme. Control Shift P is command pad. Ah, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just something useful that uh, you have these differences. It does uh, does help quite a lot. There's there's probably so many more extensions that I should be using, um, especially around Unity snippets and stuff like that. Anything that does IntelliSense for you is so good. to snap out of that one and we haven't actually changed the material layer so let's change the material go back into UV editing A to select everything on the left that we selected scale zero and now we can select that one to blue if we wanted but what about the rest well we can press ctrl i to flip the selection and then A on the left side scale zero G to move it make it green so that's one way to create something that looks a little bit like a low poly landscape if it's too steep for example we can select everything scale Z flatten it again let's say we wanted some uh, white snow capped tops here when you throw in an edit mode here maybe press uh, one to vertex select double click A to deselect everything B to box select and let's go like this switch into face selector mode with three again maybe we still want let's say we wanted some uh, gray mountains first we could do control plus a few times maybe to there on the left side here we've also got some water selected now if we didn't want that to be selected we can see it's these we could maybe deselect these manually like this if it's tricky to see where the water is selected and stuff you can actually click on this little thing here called uv sync selection because now if i do b shift select that one it'll deselect edit anything that had the that blue color and then we can switch this back mm, so now we, we've ensured that we don't have any water selected and then i can do g here and go to gray maybe and then control minus maybe three times and then g and move that to black and tab out of edit mode and now we've created something that looks a little bit like a low poly landscape one more modifier that's quite useful and that is the skin modifier if you wanted to create a tree again for example you could do here you can there's actually another useful thing here you can go to preferences and then here we type extra objects enable that one because now when we press shift k we can actually add a mesh but we can add a single work it'll bring us into vertex edit mode here and now zoom out a little bit and then i hold the control key and i just right click a bit like this and then i select this vertex right click select that vertex right click a few times with the control key uh, by the way so control key right click right click right click i hold the control key right click right click and i rotate the wheel now when we've got this uh, that looks a bit like a tree trunk we can add a modifier here and add the skin modifier here. See that it's a little bit too thick now? Tab into it, make sure you're in edit mode so you see these vertices. Press A to select all of them, and then Control A, and that's the hotkey to scale vertices for skinning, for the skinning modifier. Here, Shift D, select that one. Let's enable proportional with O. We can't do scale, remember, we have to do Control A for the skinning one, and then scale it down. And we don't want symmetry on here. And then this one, Control A, scale, and then we want proportional. So this is how you could create tree branches. Quite cool. If you remember before, we enabled a skin called vertex snapping, and we used it to snap one of these vertices onto another one like this. Ow. But one thing that's really, really useful, let's say you had uh, another line there, and let's say that one was a bit wonky, that one was a bit wonky. You can actually use the vertex snap on an axis as well. Click on this axis here that we have before here. Again, if that's not enabled, you can go up here, drop down, and have this one enabled, or you can press shift space and G to enable it as well. That's the same as clicking on the smooth tool here. And now if I move on this axis, and then I hold the control key, and then snap it to there, it'll only snap it on the x-axis for that one. And this is a really, really so useful, useful. Line to make sure that they're on the same on the same <laughs> distance on, on one axis. Similarly, if I wanted to bring this one up and make sure it's the same height as this one, move it on this one, hold the control key and move it and move it so you get that little circle. And then we can see here that that one's poking out. We wanted to bring that one into the same as there. Move it on the green axis, on the y-axis, hold the control key and snap it to that one. So if you want to do aligning, vertex snapping on an axis is really useful.
We've already enabled Auto Mirror here, but uh, there are a couple of more ones I'd like to mention. So in Preferences, under Add-ons, one good is uh, Loop Tools, so make sure you enable that one. And another one while I'm here is F2, so enable that one too. And one more is Dolly Tools, let's enable that one. And I'll show you what these do as well. So if I do Shift-A, Mesh Cube, here we've got a uh, normal cube again. Let's subdivide this one, Control-3 maybe, and apply that one. And let's say you wanted to make these, you wanted to extrude these, but you want them to be circle shaped. So if I shift select these and extrude, it's like a square thing now. So control Z on that one. And then we've got loop tools here. You've got a few things. I won't go through all of them now. You can experiment with these. But one, for example, is circle here. And that just basically takes that square and makes it a circle. And that one extrude, it's more like a round thing. So that's very useful. But there are some other good things here as well, like flatten that we did before. We've got uh, bridge and all sorts of stuff. So the other thing uh, which is really good is the bool tools one. And again, if I edit here, it's a uh, bool tool here. If I do shift D to duplicate this, and then I select this one, shift select that one, and then I'll do control shift minus on the keypad. Then it basically cuts that first mesh out of this one. Again, very useful. Maybe you wanted to create a moon or something like that. So maybe we scale this one off with proportional, scale it down. Do a few of these. I'll select this one, shift select this one, control shift minus on the keypad. I'll select this one, this one, control minus. Select this one, remember shift select that one, control shift minus on the keyboard. Definitely going to be using that. So bool tool, very useful, especially to do subtracted uh, boolean operations. And then the next one is the F2 that I did. And uh, for example, if you have, uh, let's say we have a bunch of these cutaway, press delete, faces, F2 will do this for you. Remember that we created faces before. Uh, we could do everything and press F to create one big weird face. But F2 add-on will do this for you. Select this one, press F, 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 F. It'll automatically fill that together for you into usually a quite a good sequence. All right, I want to finish off this uh, lengthy video with a few tips as well. If you run into issues, uh, there could be a few tips maybe that you can look into. So one thing that you might run into is parallel faces. And if you select this one, and then if you extrude now up, then you've actually got this face here is sliding down between, and that's not really good. You don't want that. So there's a few things that you could do to fix this. One way to do it is uh, if we've got uh, this auto merge vertices here, I could do Control R, add a loop cut here, and slide it down roughly to that place. And if I made it close enough, which I didn't because they're still separate there, then it's uh, it wouldn't have fixed it. I'll select this vertex, press G to move it. Control and snap it onto that one, since I've got this vertex snapping on here. Same thing for this one, select that. And that vertex is actually dug into here, so I do Alt-Z to see through. Select that one, Alt-Z, G to move it, and snap it onto there. And now, and then if I move this vertex now, you can see that we don't have any double faces there anymore. And if I do Alt-Z, I can also see on 3 here, we've got an issue still. We've got an internal face here that was created due to this. You can only see that with Alt-Z here, and I've got that selected there. And then you can just press delete and delete that face. And now we see that there's no dot here anymore in the center. Alt Z, so everything's fixed. We've now fixed that double alignment. The other thing that we had is if we don't have this enabled, we could have some duplicate vertices sometimes. So if I do Control R, loop cut that one, move that one up to there roughly. Let's actually snap it. Let's do this all together. And snap all of these up to the here. Now it looks like this is just uh, a normal mesh here, but if I try to fab here and move this one, you can see that it goes all weird. And the best way to fix this one is just do A for everything, M, and then merge by distance. And suddenly six vertices were removed and now everything's back to normal. The other thing that we had is that faces are facing the wrong direction. So remember, if you have something that looks like a gap, but there's actually a face here, you could either do Alt N to flip it, or you can do it for the whole mesh and do everything, Alt N and recalculate outside. That would usually fix that one. Then you had the misaligned vertices like this. You wanted to have those aligned. Remember, make sure that vertex snapping is on move it on this axis, hold the control key and snap these into edge. Same for the height and the width, you could do control snap it, control snap it height-wise to that one and height-wise to that one. So that's one way to really align everything back into shape. If mm -hmm. insetting is behaving really strange for you, let's say we wanted to inset this one like this, height inset. If for some reason you have accidentally scaled your object outside of edit mode, let's say you're in object mode, you scale your object along the x-axis or let's do the y-axis like this. Now, if you look here on the item, you can see that the scale here is Strange. It's not one, one, one. So now if I try to inset this one, it's not scaling it uniformly. It's scaling it a lot more on the y-axis, and that's because this y-axis scale is more. And to fix that, you have to just select the object in object mode, click Control A, and apply scale, and that brings it back to the scale to one, 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 and then I to inset right, okay. so that the inserting is working correctly. Let's say you wanted to work on this vertex here, but when you rotate, you're not really rotating around that vertex. Just press Delete on the keypad or the period or the comma key, and that will recenter everything and scroll out again. And now when you rotate, you'll work nicely around that object, so it frames it to that object. Another thing that you might run into is if you add a subdivision modifier by pressing Control 3, for example, when everything looks too round, let's say you wanted the base not to be rounded, Control Z out of that one, then you could press Control R in edit mode here, add a loop cut quite close to the base, so it's doubled up here. And now if I tab out of it into object mode and press Control 2 again, then you can see that it kept uh, a nice solid edge around the bottom here. So that's one way to get around if you want to keep some edges when you uh, subdivide it. The other thing that we had, remember, when we did the center line, when we subdivided, for example, for a car window or something like that, if you have mirror modifier on and the inset produces a face in the center that you don't want, make sure you press B for boundary and that'll remove that little uh, center face for you and if b doesn't work it's because you have individual faces on so press i again first to disable individual faces and then b for boundary 
All right, guys, so that sums up. It was a long video and a lot of information, but it's pretty much uh, everything that I do when I low-poly model stuff. Uh, this is what I've learned over the course of the last four to five years that I've been using Blender. I used a bit of 3ds Max before that, but not really on a serious level. But I think uh, it's mostly the two most recent years that I've done a lot of... All the timestamps as well, for when we come back to it. <laughs> and good fast techniques to do low poly modeling. Come back to the video, rewatch certain parts, uh, break it down, practice, 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 make a lot of low poly stuff. I do that all the time. I basically jump into Blender and I just model anything I can think of. Houses, islands, cars, dragons. I haven't even covered, in this video, I haven't covered so much about character modeling. Same technique applies, but when it comes to rigging, it'll be a few more things and, and animating moves. I should make some videos about that. So thanks a lot guys for sticking with me. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I've also got a Patreon. So if you want to give that a little bit of extra support, head over to patreon.com slash Infensia. Until next time, have a good one. Take care and bye for now. All right. Well, that was pretty useful. I let this summary go. So I can drop that away. So let's let's turn on the rest of these. See what we've got. Some weird shapes across the side here uh, that we played around with. Um, so, this was just learning how to use. Oh, if I'm in. Let's go in here. So, this was just learning how to use some of the controls. This was our first look at creating this object. And then we did the low poly tree. We did this skyscraper that got joined together, and then there were some other things. There's a crate, there's whatever that thing was, <laughs> there's another crate, there's our top of our desk table for the, the PC. We didn't bother following all of that completely, and then our rock that we started with. So yeah, um, interesting tutorial there. Yeah, I think that's that's a good starting point for me at least, is uh, if I want to try and do some indie development stuff, I really don't want to get into too much detail with everything, and low poly gives you really good results actually, and also better performance uh, than some of the advanced stuff. Um, and it means I'm not going to be spending ages trying to figure out how to do everything and make everything look perfect. Um, but yeah, it's been fun. Uh, we're going to wrap up the Unity stream there. I'm going to be back, uh, well, back in a couple of hours for Cuphead. Um, so we're finishing off the last couple expert levels on that this evening. And then back tomorrow uh, from about 2, two o'clock GMT for some more of this. So... I think tomorrow it'll be applying everything we've learned. Hopefully, we'll remember how everything works and making some models for our game. So yeah, thanks everyone who's dropped in. Thanks for the follows. Uh, thanks for everyone who's given me tips in the chat as well. <laughs> it's been very useful. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed it. So yeah, catch you tomorrow or later. Have a good one. And let me just set up my ending screen. <laughs> there we go. Uh, cheers. Have a good one.